factors to reckon with again this year. But today's game should be far more competitive. The rebuilding has been done. Coach Bill Davis's Tigers dominated Bethune-Cookman last week in the Gator Bowl, winning 35-20, their first victory over a 1AA team ever. And it was a team that had beaten the Tigers easily in 1990. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern had jumped out to an incredible 17-0 lead over Auburn. But the Tigers rallied big time in the second half to come back to a 32-17 victory. So Georgia Southern knows they need a win today. Both coach Tim Stowers of Georgia Southern and Bill Davis of Savannah State are aware of the challenge ahead. Well, it really is. It's another David and Goliath situation. This time the, the shoe is on the other foot. Uh, we're Goliath and they're David. And they're going to take that smooth stone out of the Savannah River. And they're coming up to Paulson Stadium, Lim Bryant Field Saturday, and they're going to throw it right at the giant. If they hit a perfect shot, they go home a winner. That'd be the biggest win in Savannah State College history. And on the other hand, you know, we're Goliath. They're, they're a Division II team. We're a 1AA team. And the 1AA team's supposed to win the football game. And that's what's so difficult, being the coach on the team of a game that you're supposed to win and, and get that through our players' mind that you're supposed to win this football game. But Savannah State has, has a lot of talent. They have good speed. They have a good quarterback, a good tailback. A couple of defensive linemen I really like in Dean and Bird. Uh, this might be Coach Davidson's best Savannah State football team. Uh, winning over a Division I AA opponent does uh, carry a lot of weight uh, in our, our feelings it does. Uh, and winning the first game and, and going in there with a win uh, is a lot better than uh, going in there with a loss. Great rivalry developing here, too. It really is. We've had, a, we've had a lot of people come from Savannah to the football game. We've had like 19,000 one time, like 21,000 the next. And we're just probably expecting about 20,000 plus this weekend. Uh, I think it's a great rivalry that needs to continue. Uh, it's a good, clean football game. Uh, I think it can be a good rivalry over the next few years. And on the surface, the Georgia Southern players aren't taking this one lightly either. I see it as we just have to, we have to keep our composure and realize it's a better state can beat us. They've got an excellent team. The quarterback's excellent, the receivers, um, they get after it a lot better than they did last year. They have a great football team. And they showed it last week, so we just had to study the field and just come out and play hard. It was so difficult last year working with an inexperienced line for you guys in the, in the backfield. Now that uh, now that you have a, a good line up in front of you, it has to make you feel more comfortable. I think you proved it against Auburn. Yeah, it didn't make us feel comfortable. You know, last year they, they came around pretty quickly, you know. So the line's doing good, so we just have to get together as a team, you know, just go on and play. And play they shall. Georgia Southern versus Savannah State, the Coastal Empire's new Civil War. Coming up next. Good afternoon, everybody. Bill Edwards along with Terry Harbin for the Savannah State game where it's hot as blue blazes, Terry. As you can tell, it's, uh, it's uh, just a little, uh, little warm out here this afternoon, but it's a great day for football, Bill, and it's going to be an exciting day for football. A little different atmosphere. Georgia Southern uh, blowout winner last year over Savannah State. They feel a little more confident. They come in here off of a big win against Bethune-Cookman. Uh, Georgia Southern disappointed after their loss at Auburn after getting off to a big lead last week. Well, on Savannah State's side, rightly so, they should be uh, pumped up for the game. They beat a very good Division I AA school in Bethune-Cookman. They always give Georgia Southern a ball game when we play them. We don't play them anymore now at Savannah State. Savannah State's coming out here today. They're going to play ball. Bill, I spoke with Coach Davis earlier, and uh, he said, I told my players to stay loose, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Football is supposed to be a fun game. They're going to come out here and have fun. They don't want to get behind, and they don't want to play catch-up football. Coach Tim Stowers says that uh, the thing that he worries about is that he's the coach of the team that's supposed to win, and when you're supposed to win, there's a little more pressure there. As Coach Davis told me they have everything to gain and nothing to lose, and rightly so. It's the same thing as Georgia Southern playing Auburn last year. I mean, last week. Georgia Southern had everything in the world to gain. Auburn has everything to lose. Same situation with just reversed roles. Will the, uh, the heat make a big difference out here? A lot of the players like would rather play in the warm weather than they would cold weather, they told me. I think it has, um, it's going to affect Savannah State more so than Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern's been out here every day. They're used to playing in this atmosphere. They've come out to pregame a little later than Savannah State. I know Savannah State came out here a little, uh, they've been out here a pretty good long time, so they're, uh, they're probably getting a little tired out, so we'll see. Okay, and we'll see you with the first half. Uh, we're going to be bringing you the game between Savannah State and also uh, Georgia Southern. There's a uh, talk about the warm weather. Scott Pierce is going to tell us a little bit more about uh, what to expect today. Scott? Thanks a lot, Bill. I guess one thing that we really want to talk about today, the weather conditions. A gorgeous day, a lot of sunshine, some clouds popping up overhead. 
but the big factor is going to be the temperature. When the sun's out, it's going to be about 100 degrees down on the field, and that can definitely take it out of the players. Also, we want to talk, talk about the rule changes for this year. One of the biggest, most notably, the much narrower goal post. They've been moved in about five feet, so about not much room for the kickers this year. I was talking to Mike Dallas, ex-kicker for uh, Georgia Southern. He said that they really come into play from the 30-yard kicks in. That's when you have the much wider hash marks. They didn't move them in like the pros, and it's going to be a lot harder to get those field goals in. Not as much room. Otherwise, looks like a great day to play football here in Statesboro. Back to you, Bill. Not many of the students here yet, Scott, but uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere for football. Bands are here, and it uh, could be a lot of fun, Terry. Well, Savannah State College brought their band today. They're, they're going to bring a lot of folks into the stadium, and Alan E. Paulson. So Georgia Southern's not going to be the only fans that are going to be cheering loud. Savannah State's going to give them a run for their money, and they're going to come in and play football, Bill. All right, get set for the kickoff. We'll be back right after this. A wonderful afternoon of college football. Terry Harbin uh, and Bill Edwards here with you, and it should be a very nice day. We talked about uh, the game conditions just before the game, Terry. And uh, it's clouded up just a little bit. That could have a factor. It's probably going to cool things off by about 10 degrees or so. Well, at the beginning of the year, the, uh, the heat always plays. It always is a major factor at the beginning of the year. And in this case, it's going to be the same thing. Same thing's going to hold true here. But as I said earlier, Savannah State was, uh, was out here a little earlier than I think they probably needed to be. We might see that later in the second half. Especially when, uh, you know, you talk about depth. I think depth was a big factor last week against Auburn, mm -hmm. and uh, so it could be the same for Savannah State this week. It definitely will be. Savannah State has every, all the makings of a good team, except for depth. They have speed. They have quickness. They have some experience. They lack depth. That could hurt them in the second half, just like it hurt us against Auburn. Savannah State is going to be receiving, and uh, you could see from the flag just a moment ago that there's not a whole lot of breeze uh, going on up there, but it tends to get a little breezier down on the field, is it not, Terry, with the valley here? Exactly true. It's a kicker's place right now. So getting set to kick off, the man handling the kicking chores is going to be David Cool. Gets it way down. It's going to be taken by Savannah State right there. It's Lucius Cole at the five-yard line. I believe that's Lucius. I'm going to take that back. Returning it to the 20, getting ready for Savannah State, uh, putting it in play. Number 29 for Savannah State on the return there. Brandon Rice made that tackle. Brandon Rice is one of those players that, that every coach wants to have, especially on special teams. He's a player. He hustles down. He breaks the wedge. He's going to make the tackle. Him and Chuck McClure are always going to be down there. Savannah State getting set. Greg Levert at quarterback right behind him is David Coleman, the fullback, and Coleman's going to get the call straight ahead. Not much yardage there, just across the 20. Is it something that, um, Terry, when you first start out, uh, that you're just sort of feeling each other out? I think that's exactly what Savannah State's going to do. They were very successful with the run last week. They had 400 yards in rushing, and uh, they're going to try to test that on Southern this week. There you see the offense, Everett, Coleman, Lucius Cole, Clarence Phillips out split. And the give is going to be, well, it's going to be uh, Ever Leverett keeping it again. Doesn't get much yardage. Gets up a couple more yards to the 25-yard line where it's going to be third down and five. Alignment for Savannah State. You'll see Dexter Williams across the front. Ernest Green, he's a Savannah kid, along with uh, Gerard uh, Gennard Green. Um, Kent Holcomb, along with Steve Acock at center. Good center. Big kid out of Atlanta. Ever bringing him up. Diedrich Smith split wide to the right as Leverett drops the pass. Wants to find somebody. Can't. Going to run. Looks like he could have. No. He, I thought he was open for a first down for a second there. And a lot of folks came up like Shane Maxwell very, very quickly. And Darius Dawson to make the stop. And there was very little gain on the play. About two yards, Terry. And that's what Georgia Southern's going to have to do on the defensive side. They're going to have to bring Maxwell up to contain Leverett. Because that's what he does best. If he can get around the corner and turn it up, he's going to get a first down. Guys like Michael Berry, Ronald Johnson, Sean Harrelson, as well as Eugene Hayes on the defensive line for Georgia Southern. The linebackers are Paul Sickley, Darius Dawson, and Shane Maxwell. A couple of the guys in on that stop just a moment ago. And we'll show you the rest of the defense a little bit later. Kicking chores going in. A punt almost blocked, but did manage to get it away. You know, Bill, what was so important about that play right there, not just because it was a poor punt, but... The Southern defenders laid out on that, and they did not hit the punter. 
Now, if they would have hit Jones, the punter for Savannah State, Savannah State would have gotten the ball back on a roughing the punter. That was a great play by Georgia Southern special teams. It was indeed, and uh, Jones kind of went down there trying to get maybe the Emmy Award on that one. That's his job, you know. <laughs> That's right. Should have hung his leg a little higher and leaned into the hit. <laughs> if you can convince him. So here we go. Offensively for Georgia Southern, there's Charles Bostic. He's going to give it straight ahead there to Lester Eford on the play. Both teams feeling each other out. Uh, Savannah State did the exact same thing on their first play. Our offenses are very similar. We run the same type of offense, same type of quarterback. As I said earlier, I think we have a little more depth. Charles Bostic, Lester Eford, Daryl Hopkins, Don Hudson in the backfield, Daryl Belzer and Terrence Sorrell will be the guys split out. And then the linemen are going to be James uh, Baker, Rex Nottage, Miguel Ayub, Kevin Morse, and Rusty Parrish at center. As the pitch goes around to Lester Eford, Eford down to the 35-yard line, skirting to the outside before he's finally tripped up out there by Donald DuPont. Now Savannah State needs to get on the outside and keep Hop, keep Bostic from breaking contain and turning it up the corner. Belser made a heck of a block right there, but Hop lost his footing and uh, he probably could have got 10 more yards. It's a great block by the receiver. Very impressive uh, performance for Charles Bostic last week. And, uh, People were a little concerned when he went down with that ankle sprain, Terry. Well, I tell you what Bostic did that was so important last week is he showed maturity. Here he is, the first-year player. He's a redshirt freshman. He didn't fumble the ball. He played great ball. He played no like the seniors. Exactly. He didn't turn the ball over a lot, and that's what you kind of expect out of a first-year freshman. Savannah State's defensive line, Orlando Dean, Mark McClendon, Kenneth Wright, and Jerry Bird as they measure for the first down, and that's indeed what it is. The two players on Savannah State's defense that really stand out, Orlando Dean and Mark McClendon, and they're going to have to stand out today, as I said earlier, to keep, the, keep Southern's backs from turning the corner and breaking containment. Southern up to the line. Terrence Sorrell split wide to the right, and to the near side, it's going to be Belzer. And Bostic is going to pitch it back to Eford. Eford breaks a tackle, gets up a little. Now I'm not sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. Back to the 35. He may have lost about a half yard on that play. Ken Wright made a good tackle on that. He, he just pursued down the line of scrimmage. Uh, he didn't get blocked, and he just he caught him on the cutback. Kenneth Wright out of Hinesville, 6'1", 258-pound junior. Excellent at left tackle. Savannah State has great size on a defensive front. It's going to be second down and uh, long 10. Bostic brings him up. Eford right behind him and Don Hudson in motion, and Bostic's going to keep it himself, and he's got nowhere to go. There's Ken Wright again. He comes <laughs> back. We just got finished talking about him. Savannah State's defensive front line, they're huge. They're 6'1", 6'1 and a half. They're 259. That, that's impressive. It's going to be third and long, and I would presume that we might see our first pass of the afternoon, Terry. <laughs> if not, we might see our first field goal. <laughs> but third down as Bostic brings him out. In motion, Hopkins rolling out as Bostic fires. Complete, but I don't think he was in bounds. He threw out that with some authority, didn't he, Bill? He really did. I think that's what the fans were looking for last week at Auburn. They were kept waiting for Bostic to come out and throw the ball. Terrence Sorrell uh, caught the ball, but it was out of bounds, and Roger Mydell was right there, a kid out of Rinkin, played at Effingham County High School. And so you're right. We're going to see our uh, first field goal. And... Um, You've uh, handled kicking chores uh, before. It's going to be called, I think, at a 53-yarder. 52 or 53-yarder, it's right in between. Cool's got the leg, but like we talked about, the goalposts are narrow. It's a little better from this distance, and it's, uh, yeah. Just clears it. David Cool gives Georgia Southern a 3 to nothing lead. And just like that, the Eagles are on top, but Savannah State will get the football right back, and we'll be right back after this timeout. to nothing. I think they got that backwards there. <laughs> David, David cool. cool with yeah. a 52-yard field goal. Well, he showed that he could do it as a freshman. 55-yard in the national championship game against Furman. Uh, he comes out with a 60-yarder against James Madison to set a record <laughs> for freshman amazing. in the NCAA. <laughs> so David Cool has the cannon, you know. You know, that's the great thing. I guess one of the great things about being a kicker in any league, uh, Terry, is that 50 yards is 50 yards in anybody's league, and so the pros can get a little better look at you as Cool boots it way down the field. And it's going to be taken in the end zone and down there by Savannah State. Let me tell you what that field goal does for David Cool. That pumps him up. That gets his adrenaline flowing. It gets him in the game. And he puts the kickoff five yards deep in the end zone. 
Savannah State has nothing to do in that case but to take it out of the 20, and that's what you want out of your kickoff team. Ronald Rogers is the guy who uh, took that one, a uh, senior out of uh, Jacksonville, and it'll be first and 10 for the Tigers on the 20, their second possession, and looking for their first first down of the day as Greg Leverett brings him up. He's a six-foot junior, 185-pounder out of Lincoln. Calls things over. Got David Coleman set right behind him in the eye. A little bit of a mix-up in the backfield, and he's going to be buried by the likes of Alex Mash and several others back there who were in there all. It just looked like there was a mix-up on it, Terry. Well, I think they shot the gaps on that. Curtis Gordon and Mash really shot the gaps on that. The offensive linemen were slow getting off the ball. I think that's going to be a distinct Georgia Southern advantage on the front line. Even though we're not nearly as big as they are up there, their offensive line average is 6'2", 274. We're faster than they are, so we don't know what the... We don't know what's going to come out of that. Mash really distinguished himself last year as a freshman. Scored a touchdown on an interception in the uh, championship game late as Leverett drops back to pass, rolls out. This is what he likes to do. Fires downfield. Intercepted by Jim Mutimer at the 35-yard line. It's Georgia Southern's football. We just got finished talking about Alex Mash. Alex Mash calls that interception. He was on his back. He was on Leverett's back. Leverett knew he was there, kind of rushed his throw. Probably shouldn't throw it. Boom. They, they say that, you know, Terry, he's not just a, he's not a good pocket passer because of his height, and uh, so he likes to do that rollout. When you roll out, uh, you lose a lot of energy. Well, but Leverett's got a lot of speed, so he ought to be able to turn that corner, and there gives him a double option. He can either tuck it up and roll, run it, or he can throw it and find somebody open. In that case, uh, I don't think he really had a choice. <laughs> he would have been tackled <laughs> by Mash or he throws interceptions. Uh, Jim Mutimer um, done a terrific job all these years for Georgia Southern. Now coming up with the interception as Bostic pitches it back out to Eford. Eford's going to turn the corner just a little bit, but there's not a whole lot there as a little extracurricular activity after the um, ball was down. But, hey, what the heck, boys will be boys. That's right. And it gets down. Maybe we get a couple of yards. Savannah State made a good play on that, and they capitalized on the fact that George Southern's offensive lineman, I think it was not, is didn't quite get out there, and I think he stumbled a little bit. So they shot the gap and made the tackle. 9.35 to go in the first half, the first quarter. You're rushing this game up, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? And there's a little flare pass out to Hudson there in the right flats, and Hudson breaks a couple of tackles and finally goes out of bounds, I think, around the 24-yard. No, they're going to bring it back and mark it at about the 20, 26. Very close to first down yardage out there. Daryl Hoppin sprung that thought on that one. That's the thing that uh, you, you try to point out. It's going to be third down in about a yard, Terry. But uh, the thing that you try to um, emphasize is that a lot of these guys, just because you're not carrying the football, they don't have the play off. They're out there blocking. We have some of the best blocking backs that Georgia Southern does uh, I've ever seen. And Darrell Hopkins is one of the best we've ever had, to tell you the truth. Tight power eye. Bostic brings him up, looks around. Is he calling an audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Gives it straight ahead to Hopkins, and Hopkins is going to power his way forward. Uh, very close to first down yardage. We'll have to wait for him to unpile. I think he has it. Savannah State in that situation is going to run your typical 6-5 goal line defense. Georgia Southern brings a couple in, puts them in a tight end, and we're just going to try to ram it down his throat. Okay, he didn't. He didn't quite make it. It's going to be fourth down and about a foot. Yeah, you go for it here, definitely. Bossy's going to bring him up. Looking for probably Eford to carry the football. Going to be given to Hopkins. Hopkins, big hole over the right side. He has the first down up to about the 21-yard line. Got about five yards on the play. Good blocking up front there. The kids that we never talk enough about. Miguel Ayub, Kevin Morse, Rusty Parrish, Rex Nottage, James Baker all open in the holes up front. Exactly. And in that, in that particular case, they went a little off tackle on that. Got him a few yards. Where traditionally we've gone up and over, you know, with E.T. in 89, with Joe Ross last year. With Hopkins, we have, we have a luxury of shooting the, the off-tackle play. Hopkins comes out, and I'm not sure. I think he may be just for a little bit of a breather. Shafton Fraley goes in the ball game. Kid out of Milledgeville. He's a freshman, redshirt freshman. Has um, got to be a give right up there and, uh, to, to Lester Eford. And, Ken again, Wright not much. Ken Wright made the tackle on that, Bill. I think he's in for a big afternoon. If he, if he keeps this up, he is. You know, we're looking for a lot out of Orlando Dean and Mark McClendon, the two Savannah State ends. We're also looking, a, looking for a lot out of the middle linebacker, Patrick Dean. Right now, Ken Wright's saying, I'm coming to play ball. <laughs> he's, uh, he's definitely doing a job. He's being heard from from Georgia Southern. They're second down. 
and 10 yards to go. They give to Eford again. Nice hole on the right side. Lester breaks a tackle at the 15-yard line and falls forward almost to the 10, where it's going to be first down yardage up to uh, close to the, just outside the 10-yard line. Put it on the hash mark right between the 10 and the 11 on the far side of the football field. Michael A.U. and Rex Nod had sprung, sprung that run. They, uh, they shut off Dean, the middle linebacker, and Abel Lester to get past the line of scrimmage where he can do his best. Put his head down and run over some people. <laughs> Georgia Southern driving. They're ahead in this ball game by a score of three to nothing. First quarter, 7:04 to go, and the clock moving. The give is over to Lester. Lester slices off the left side, gets inside the five. Nice running, as he's finally brought down over there. Fronty of Fountain is the guy who got to him first. There you see Lester Eford, big senior out of Warner Robins, 5'8", 215 pounds, a gold helmet winner at Warner Robins High School, Terry. Hey, he came in a lot. He, he's a little lighter this year than he was last year. In That's the years right. Past. But uh, he still has the, the muscle power, and it looks like, um, you know, hasn't lost anything as uh, Bostic rolls out, looking for somebody to pass to. Going to keep it and gets just inside the five-yard line. Not much there. Again, covering the corners very, very nicely over there for Savannah State. That's what Savannah State needs to do, and in that case, Patrick Dean. or Yeah, it was Patrick Dean made a good play on that kept Bostick from turning up the corner. If he had turned it up, he'd have been in the, in the end zone. Dean's one of the guys that um, Coach Tim uh, Stowers told us he was very impressed with. He's a junior from Knoxville, 5'11", 200 pounder. Plays it outside linebacker and great pursuit there on the outside where it's going to be third down. Southern still can get a first down out of this deal. But they're going to have to get it very, very close. Third down and four is what, the, what they're calling for. Clock running, 546 to go. Georgia Southern up three to nothing. Bostic is going to pitch it. Uh, fumble, and Savannah I believe State Savannah State has it. Falling on the football for Savannah State, number 51. That's a case there with Orlando a Dean. Orlando Dean. The defensive came, defensive end came in, gave Bostic, made Bostic pitch it before he really wanted to. Uh, I don't think he was ready to catch the pitch on that one, obviously. It didn't look like it. Savannah State needed that. Georgia Southern was knocking on the door. They wanted to jump up 10 to nothing. Savannah State said no. So let's see what Savannah State can do with it on their third possession of the afternoon. About five and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. As Greg Leverett brings him up, the pitch back is going to go to Cole. Cole can't turn the corner. He loses yardage almost to the goal line. Michael Barry, that's where his speed is so effective. They moved him from linebacker to defensive end. I think it was a positive move for Georgia Southern. It was a wise move by Coach Spangler and McInerney, the two co-defensive coordinators. Uh, Barry is strong, he's fast, he's intimidating, and he'll let you know it. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, had that great uh, game last year against uh, Central Florida down there, intercepted a pass, ran it back 84 yards for a touchdown, and like you say, his speed uh, moving in to take uh, Giff Smith's place, who graduated, uh, is really a credit to, uh, to everybody involved. As Bostic fumbles the football, and there's a big pileup back in the end zone like a for safety. a safety, and it's going to be 5 to nothing. Georgia Southern. Who's pitching? I think we had a, a fumbled snap on that one. I don't think Leverett really ever had it. He didn't. Steve I, Acock, the snapper there, and it just um, somehow got away. He made the wise move of falling on it. If he tried to pick it up and run it, he might not have got a handle on it. Georgia Southern could be on it right now. Could have had a touchdown. seven points. That's right. It's the best thing to do, give up two rather than seven. Jim Mutermer was the guy in there first to get on top of him, so it's going to be Savannah State. They'll be probably punting from their 20-yard line. And Georgia Southern is in the lead by a score of five to nothing. Is this a baseball game, Bill? <laughs> it's just going to say who's pitching. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> Wild afternoon. <laughs> Terry, we talked about uh, how much they narrowed the goalposts. Let's uh, take a look at the indefinite wisdom of the, um, <laughs> of the NCAA, where they keep trying to penalize excellence. What's the deal about not moving the hash marks in a little bit? The hash marks are still in the same place. It seems to me a close field goal is much more difficult now because of this weird angle they're going to have to kick it. And it is, and I really don't know why. <laughs> to tell you the honest truth, I don't know why they didn't move the hash marks in, but what it's going to do is it's going to give that college kicker, that good college kicker, an advantage going into the pros because they can kick at a wider angle. So when they come in, it's going to seem easy for them. I think they sit up nights trying to figure up this stuff. Rodney Oglesby will be the deep man back to uh, take the punt. And Savannah State gets it away. 
Oglesby is going to let it bounce. That's a live football, Rodney. Pick it up, uh, and he gets away from one tackler but can't get past another one. Slips down at the 35-yard line. Tripped up there, so Georgia Southern will go to work once again. You don't want a punt to hit the ground. You want to catch it in the air, unless it's just such a poor punt that you have no choice and you have to get away from it. But like you said, it's a live, it's a live ball. Savannah State could have easily jumped on that ball. They'd be in good field position. Stephen Gill was the guy who made the tackle and almost um, could have gotten down there uh, very, very quickly. I saw a Citadel play one afternoon when I was working in Charleston, Terry, and um, they were playing, I think, Western Carolina or something, and Citadel kicked off, and Western let the ball just sort of roll around out there, and Bobby Ross was a coach at the time just screaming at him to go get that thing as Charles Bostic rolls out, throws it way downfield. Terrence Sorrell was there, but the ball was thrown a little overhead and was out of bounds. Eric Allen covering very nicely on the play. Bostic threw that one just a little too strong. We could see that a lot out of Terrence Sorrell this year. Really, between him and Belser, we got a deep threat, but more so with Sorrell. Belser's more of your uh, more of your possession type receiver. He's going to go eight yards or ten yards, come in with a hitch, get you the first down. Sorrell's going to get behind the defensive backs. Sorrell's got great speed and just absolutely wonderful hands. So Bostic is going to bring him up once again. Lester Eford right behind him. Back split, and Hudson goes in motion, and they're going to fire it out in the flats. That goes out to <laughs> Darren Willis. That was Darren Willis. Split end out of Macon. Willis in for Belzer over there on that right side. Willis is a sophomore, six-footer, 175 pounds. Picked up some nice yardage on the play where it's going to be third down and about a yard and a half. Possession play for Southern. Gives straight up the middle. Lester Eford goes forward. I don't think he has the first down. He's about a yard shy. Again, stacked up very, very tightly in the middle of that line. And the Savannah State Tiger defense is really playing very, very well, Terry, as Don Norton comes on to punt. Or is and he going to come on to or punt? Or is he? I think Southern's going to call a timeout on that situation. Fourth and inches. The ball's on to 45. I don't know if you want to gamble right to here or not. This early in the ball game, would you? I'm not sure that I would simply because it's in our area right now. On but your it, end of the field. But it is close to midfield, so, you know, those are one of those things that's a coaching call. It's uh, about, a, about a foot to go, and we'll be back with more of the Georgia Southern Savannah State game with Savannah State trailing 5 nothing right after this. Where Georgia Southern is leading by the unusual score of 5 to nothing against Savannah State. Bill, we saw Bostic throw a, a few quick passes, one to Willis earlier. I think we threw another one to Belser. I think that's important for Charles right now because that'll get his, get his confidence built up. So when he wants to throw that long ball to Sorrell, he feels more confident about doing it. He might be more on target. He, had, he almost had Sorrell a minute ago, exactly. just uh, threw that one out of bounds a little bit. As Ronald Rogers is in deep punt formation and um, going to get it away, it's going to go to the short man. Roger Mydell caught it up there, and so Don Norton punts it away for Georgia Southern. The Tigers will put it in play. Pretty good field position at the 24-yard line. Even though Norton didn't get all that punt right there, he had a great week last week. He's uh, yeah. he had to play second, unfortunately, for three years. He did good on kickoffs. He's the type of player who's going to get pumped up and ready to go. He's going to get the other players around him ready to play, too. Super hang time last week. He can, he can boom it. That one was a little bit short, but what the heck. Average 42 last week with nine punts. Set a record. Leverett is going to keep it. Got a hole. That's Comes what we up. don't want to happen. Comes up to about the 35-yard line. Five yards on the play. Shane Maxwell, one of those in on the stop. That's what Leverett wants to do. And if he, when, if he can turn it up, he needs to turn it up. He got five, six yards on that. They're in a good situation. Second and five, second and four. Are they going to pass? Are they going to run? Second down. That four yards. Got almost six on the play. Gibb is going to go to the second guy through, and that's Cole, and he's going to get a couple of yards maybe. Gets across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Time ticking down here in the first quarter, 2 minutes and 40 seconds, and Georgia Paul. Southern up 5 to nothing. Paul you. Sickley and Darius Dawson on the tackle. Right there. Georgia 
Crowd trying to get into it a little bit now. It's going to be third down and about two. As Leverett goes to pass, fires it downfield. Rodney Oglesby may have broken it up down there. Very, very, yeah, Rodney Oglesby did break it up on the play. Clarence Phillips was the intended receiver, junior out of Houston, Texas. Couldn't quite get to the ball, and Rodney was right on top of him, sort of wearing it like a shirt. That's the only disadvantage I can see of rolling out with a quarterback, sprinting out to pass the ball, is that takes away from that middle pass, that slant across the middle, and they always have to throw a lot of out patterns. Riley Jones coming in, standing at about a 16-yard line, getting ready to punt it away for Savannah State, where it's fourth down and about two. Blocked. Picked up. Somebody's going to get it. Mark Giles picks it up and goes in for the touchdown for Georgia Southern. It happened last year, Bill. Georgia Southern blocked a couple of Savannah State's punts. Uh, Sean Austin, the cornerback out of Thomasville, came in and blocked that one. Mark Giles picked it up, and just like he did in the national championship game a few years ago, ran it in for the touchdown, and they've been very, very good at that. You can't take too long to punt against Southern. Well, Coach Davis was very concerned about South Carolina State's punt team this year, as it was he was last year. And Georgia Southern blocked a few last year, and they're back at it again. So David Cool comes on to add the extra point. Georgia Southern up 11 to nothing with 2.03 to go, and let's make it 12 as that one goes straight up and through. Georgia Southern 12, Savannah State nothing. 2.03 to go the first quarter. Like I said earlier, Coach Davis was making several comments about his punt team and how good Georgia Southern is at pressuring the punter. He said they've done a lot more work on it this year. Uh, a disadvantage of their punter is that he's a three-step punter. That can cause you some problems because he takes longer to get the ball off and he takes up more yardage to get the ball off. Southern's gone to a uh, one-and-a-half, two-step punter with Norton. They tried it last year. It's been effective. They haven't had a punt block since 1987. Uh, Florida State blocked one last year that went 18 yards. Georgia Southern getting ready to kick it away again. Savannah State will go right back on the offensive. Boy, the wind's picking up. <laughs> Cloud cover, at least it's getting cooler in here. It's blowing all of our stuff around, but what the heck. I'll take the cool. And it's David Cool getting ready to kick it away. Long. Taken on the five yard line. Back up across the 15 to about the 17 yard line. Ronald Rogers back there. And also, let's see, it was uh, Neely Lovett. David's kickoffs are very effective because he gets a lot of hang time on it. He gets it up in the air, he gives McClure, he gives Hayes, he gives Averett. He gives them guys a lot of opportunities, a lot of time to get down there and make the tackle. So Savannah State will put it in play. Even though it was fielded at the five-yard line, that hang time does have a lot to do with it. As you can see, they're just they're still a couple of yards short of the 20. As Leverett brings him up, Leverett's going to keep it cut up field, and there's not much running room. He gets maybe a yard or two up to the 20-yard line, but that's going to be the end of the line for him. Michael Moore. We'll take a look at that um, that, la that uh, touchdown play for Georgia Southern. As you can see, see here, it. their punter takes three steps. And boy, is he taking his time. Right takes time. up almost five yards to get rid of the ball. And there's the block. Nice play as we go back to live action. It'll be Leverett rolling out to his left. Stops, fires. Intercepted, was it? They gave it to him. Intercepted by Shane Maxwell. Very underthrown, obviously. Or was he ever? Didn't get a lot on it. He didn't was plan it Kevin Whitley? It. All right, Kevin Whitley out there. I was wondering what Shane was doing on that side of the field. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Kevin Whitley intercepting. It's going to be Georgia Southern's football at the Savannah State 36-yard line. Well, right now, Savannah State's doing exactly what Coach Davis didn't want to do. They're having to play catch-up ball. They're starting to fall behind a little early. Georgia Southern up 12 to nothing, and they could add to it here as Bostic gives it straight ahead to Eford. And Lester just sort of barrels his way up toward the 30-yard line. He got to about, I think, the 31 is where they may spot it. 
Donnie Myers in there on the uh, tackle. Myers, a junior, out of Brandon, Mississippi. We're getting very close to the end of the first quarter. We're inside a minute now, ticking down 45 seconds, and the clock is moving. Going to be second down in about six. Bostic is going to fire out in the flats. Complete. He should have dropped that one. Going to be a loss of about four yards back to the 35-yard line. What makes that play work is the A-back getting the block. In that case, the A-back, I think it was Steve Payne on that case, couldn't come through with his block. Therefore, it wasn't a very productive play. Shafton Fraley out of Milledgeville caught that one, and he frankly just should have let it go through his fingers. Ten seconds and counting. Let's see if they're going to be able to get this play away. Bostic's bringing them up very slowly. I think they might just let it run out here, Terry. I would. And just did get it in as Bostic is going to run a little quarterback draw play, and he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a couple of more yards. And it's going to be uh, still going to bring up about fourth down and maybe uh, two, one or two yards to go at the end of the first quarter with Georgia Southern leading by a score of 12 to nothing. So we'll change ends of the field here, and we'll get ready for, um, for Georgia Southern to go. The ball should be placed down at about the 27-yard uh, line. We'll be back with more of the Georgia Southern Savannah State game right after this. Of the second quarter is going to be an attempted 44-yard uh, uh, field goal. Once again, we talked about earlier, David definitely has a leg. He's proven in the past, but with the narrow goal post, it makes it more of a challenge for him. Let's see, Don Norton is going to be holding. Long snapper is Charles Arnott. The kick is away. It's off a little bit. Would have been good last year, but talk about those narrower goal posts. It wasn't wide by much, and he just pulled it just a little bit, and that's all it takes on these goal posts. In this situation now, more so than ever, it puts the emphasis on the holder and the snapper because, you know, they're, they're a team unit. If he gets a good snap and a good hold, he's usually going to get a good kick, and you, that's really important there. Long snapper is Charles Arnott. Um, and he is a junior out of Irmo, South Carolina. And I don't think people realize what a tough job it is to be the long snapper, Terry. <laughs> it's not one of those glory positions. He's not going to make the front page of the newspaper. We're going to see a new quarterback in there for Savannah State. It's going to be Chad Alexander. As Alexander is going to drop straight back to pass, fires it right across the middle, and it's complete. You know, we talked about that last series, about how Leverett, when he rolls out, it's hard for him to throw across the middle. Right there in the pocket, he can hit that slant. Doug Grant is the guy that caught it, and uh, Coach Davis told us before the game that's the kid that they want to get that ball to as much as possible. He's the flanker, sophomore out of Atlanta. So maybe Savannah State can get something moving here. Definitely need to get on the scoreboard and kind of keep as they give it to Cole. Cole is going to go off the right side, picks up some nice yardage, very close to a first down as he gets toward midfield at about the 46, seven yard line. Cole's a good running back. Last year, he was uh, kind of hampered a little bit with an ankle injury. He had a great freshman year. He's a good slashing running back. This year, uh, so far, he's a little timid from what I understand, but last week, he didn't show it. He had 222 yards, 28 <laughs> carries, and two touchdowns, but he's also a great receiver, so look for him to throw to him in the flats. Lucius Cole, 6'1 junior from Richmond. Virginia. Alexander firing up field once again. He's got Doug Grant once more. Big first down at the Georgia Southern 35 yard line. Nice pickup on the play. That's more the Savannah State that I remember throwing the ball, airing it out. You know, we've talked about that a lot. Savannah State in the past have been a passing offense. Last week, 400 yards rushing. They had only 256 yards passing. That's a different Savannah State team. Jim Mutimer in on the stop. As Chad Alexander, the junior from Augusta, brings him up. They're in an eye. The pitch back is going to go to Cole. Cole trying to get to the corner. He gets there and gets a yard or two. Flags go down. Paul Sickley in on the tackle. Mark, and, Jay, Mark Giles made a good play on that as he forced up. He, he, he went and met the running back, the blocking running back, and forced Cole to cut up. Holding. Going to be called on Savannah State. Boy, that's costly. That hurts you because you're getting in a rhythm. You're getting things going, and unfortunately, someone got caught for holding. It's going to back them up 15 yards. It's going to put them a long way from glory land. 10-yard penalty on the play, actually. Ball goes back just beyond the 45 of Georgia Southern. As Chad Alexander brings him out. Alexander's got a little better height, too. He's about, um, oh, 
maybe an um, inch or two taller than, than um, D Greg Leverett, and that's going to make a big difference. Alexander going to give it to Cole. Cole trying to get out of the backfield. They tried a little trap there or something, Terry, and it just didn't work. Well, it looked kind of like a draw, and Curtis Gordon made the tackle and didn't even realize it. He was pushing <laughs> his offensive lineman back so hard that he tripped Cole up on that uh, draw. Number 60, Curtis, 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 huh? What? Who? Uh, Curtis, Curtis Gordon. Gordon. He is, he is a Senior athlete. out of Ellenwood. Second down, 18 yards to go. Ball at the 47-yard line. Boy, that can look like such a long way when you're back there as Alexander rolling to his left, firing downfield, trying to find somebody, and a big crowd was intended down there for Doug Grant, but Doug was well covered by Child, Sickley, Maxwell. He drew a crowd that time, Terry. I'm kind of surprised to see Savannah State roll out like that again because the, la the previous series, they weren't effective with it. They come out here, they stay in the pocket, they get two pop passes right over the middle, they get something going, and then they try to throw this out pattern again. I'm not so sure about that. It's going to bring up third down and 18. From about the 46 and a half. You think Southern's going to pass off the defense? <laughs> Just a little bit. Mutimer way back there. and Alexander brings him up. Back to pass. Screen being pressured very, very heavily, but he manages to get it away to Riley. Riley is going to be stumbling forward to about the 45-yard line. That's what your linebacker Ronald Rogers, needs to do. I'm sorry. Paul Sickley did what he needed to do on that. He, he recognized the screen. He went up and attacked the blockers. He didn't wait for the blockers to come to him. He tried to shoot through it and bust it up, take his blockers out. That gave somebody else the opportunity to make the tackle. It was pressure last week against Auburn that looked like sometimes it may have cost us when, um, when Stan White managed to get uh, a little bit of pressure and it left people open downfield. And Stan White's the kind of guy that can get it, get it to people. But it's going to be a down, bring in a punting situation here as um, Riley Jones comes in, standing at the 40-yard line, about to get it away there. Ooh. And Michael Berry runs into him, but he doesn't get off a very good punt. Bill, the reason they didn't call roughing on that mm -hmm. was because Michael Berry got his hands on the ball. Mm -hmm. You notice the referee on that signal that he tipped the ball. Therefore, hey, he's open game. So it's going to be Georgia Southern's football at about the 26-yard uh, line, and they'll start things off once again. Just underway here in the second quarter, 11.35 to go. Georgia Southern up by a 12 to nothing score. A field goal, a touchdown, and a safety. Crazy. Can we make a cycle? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're about to hit for the cycle. Is there a cycle so, in football? Uh, by the way, it was the defense that scored the touchdown on the blocked punt. As well Mark as the Giles. safety. Yeah. Can't argue with that. As Bostic goes to keep it, and he's going to get wrapped up and thrown for about a five-yard loss. It's Mark McClendon. We talked about him earlier. Defensive end, 6'2", 260 senior. He had eight tackles last year. He was a starter in 1990. He's quick. He's aggressive. He's a big fella. He can play ball. Senior out of Charlotte. He is impressive. So it's going to be second down and about uh, 13 yards to go for Southern with the ball on the about the 22-yard line. Bostic brings him up. You see that big line there for Savannah State. Bostic rolling out to his right. Fires downfield. Incomplete intended for Terrence Sorrell, but he couldn't hold on to it. And Bostic looked like he had some good running room out there, Terry. I think I'd have just kept on going. He had a lot of good running room. He had two blockers. He had number 35, Lester Efert, in front of him. He had Steve Payne in front of him. He had a lot of room to run the ball. He probably could have ran for the first down and then some. He chose to throw the ball. That's going to come with maturity. As Bostic gets older, he's going to recognize that. That's what Raymond was so good about last year and Tracy Ham before him. Hopefully we'll get to sit here and watch Bostic mature, get older, and get better about that. I think we will if we can keep that knee healthy. Roger Mydell and Eric Allen in on the uh, to help break things up over there. Going to be third down and 13. All sides against Savannah State. Yeah. So let's going to make it, uh, you hear the Boo Birds come out uh, for the Tigers side there, make it second down and nine. Offside penalty against Savannah State. They line off offsides, 10.54 to go in the half costly penalty for Savannah State because it now gives Georgia Southern another opportunity. Second. Make it second down. Beat the down. A little Utah pass is going to go ahead. Big yardage no, up to about the 35 yard line carrying there for Georgia Southern. As Steve Payne, we talked about him earlier. He was uh, the leading blocker for Boston last play. Giving the ball in that Utah pass. 
on that bill, you know, if, if Payne would have fumbled that ball on the pass from Bostick, it would have been ruled a pass, not a fumble. And sometimes we see that where we'll see the quarterback pitch it in front and it's a fumble and everybody goes nuts over it, but yet it's just like a pass. It's been incomplete. That's correct. As long as it's moving forward. Third down and about a foot to go. It's a big play for Savannah State here. Pitch going to go back to Lester Eford. Eford's not going to get it. He's going to lose a couple of yards on the play where it's going to be fourth down and about two or three. Orlando Dean, we <laughs> talked about him again, the two defensive ends. He came through. He made that play happen for Savannah State. That's what Savannah State needed right now to make Georgia Southern punt so they can get the ball back, hopefully put some points on the board before half. Dean, the junior from Macon. And, um, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, the Coach Davis had emphasized, that he did not want um, Good punt. Did not want to get too far behind. Long, long, booming kick. It's a big punt for, for Norton. Puts the ball inside the 20. That's a stat that a lot of punters recognize, but definitely the defensive quarter, coordinator recognizes it. Backed up Dietrich Smith to the 19-yard line where it's going to be first down for the Tigers there. Nine minutes and 39 seconds to go in the first half, and Georgia Southern up by a score of 12 to nothing. Just some interesting statistics on um, Whitley's uh, interception a while ago. That's his eighth career interception and the uh, third touchdown of Mark Giles' career when he returned that fumble, 76 yards for a touchdown in the AA quarterfinals against Idaho last year. His first punt was blocked against Furman, as we mentioned, in that national championship game in 88, Terry, as um, we're going to see uh, Chad Alexander back in there. He's going to cut up field, getting some nice yardage, and, boy, it looked like he just might go. Rodney Oglesby with a maybe a touchdown-saving tackle there in the middle of the field as he crosses the 30-yard line up to about the 33 for a first down. That's a sign of a good quarterback and a mature quarterback and that he read the defense. He saw the gap, and he shot through it. He didn't delay. He just went to it. He felled out the defense. He got a good 10 yards, got another first down. Chad Alexander moving these guys. As he goes straight back to pass once again, sets up. He's got plenty of time, a lot of protection. Complete to number 24 out there. Nice play. Diedrich Smith catches it. Get out of Atlanta. It's a great catch, and uh, Brad Allman let him know it was a great catch as he took his legs out from under him. Another first down just inside Georgia Southern Territory at about the 49-yard line, maybe the 49 and the three-quarter yard line. <laughs> there again, Wright could have tucked it up and ran for it. 8.50 to go. First half, Georgia Southern leads 12 to nothing, but Savannah State on the move. The give is going to go to Cole. Cole goes off the left side, gets a couple. Gets to the 45-yard line, about five yards on the play. Mark Giles, Shane Maxwell in there on the tackle for Georgia Southern. Along with Sean Harrelson. It'll be second down and a long five. Alexander, the kid moving him for the Tigers. Back to pass again, straight back, just like you'd mentioned, Terry. And a pass over on the side there. Com uh, I'm not sure if they're going to call it a completion or not. They're going to roll it a fumble. Are they going to call it a fumble? I think so. Paul Clarence Stickley's Phillips. laying on it. They're giving it to Georgia Southern. Now in the NFL, would they go to the replay booth on that one? Uh, I think they would. That was Oglesby on that one. He made the hit. The guy clearly had the catch. Oglesby knocked it loose. Whether he had it long enough to be called a... Reception, I don't know. That was the question. New quarterback, Bill. Derek McGrady in for Georgia Southern. Well, we'll see what McGrady can do here. He's playing in his own backyard right here in Statesboro. Statesboro native. He's got a lot of crowd support. He got junior. a little PT last week against Auburn. And looked very good. Comes in, kind of carried himself on the first play and gets wrapped up right away. A lot of folks in there for Savannah State. Well, Ken Wright and uh, Orlando <laughs> Dean and Mark McClendon said hello to uh, Derek. And Welcomed him to the ball game. Did we get an inch at Savannah State? Not sure. Charles Bostick doesn't look as if he's hurt. He thinks he's just getting a breather. I'm sure that's what it is. As the give is going to go over on the left side. We have a fumble. And a fumble and does. I think they're going to call him down. The, now, remember, Bill, that the ground cannot cause a fumble. And I think that's why they're giving it the third down right now to Georgia Southern. 
Well, I know they're screaming home cooking over on the other side as James Williams fumbled that football. And it's just going to be third down and about six, maybe seven. Good break for Georgia Southern, uh, an unfortunate one for Savannah State. They needed something defensively to happen to get the ball back. Savannah State needs to put some points on the board before half. Down 12 to nothing is Savannah State as McGrady goes back to pass and he's going to be caught in the backfield and there's going to be very, very little room to run as Orlando Dean out of Macon runs him down as he crosses the 35-yard line and I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. No, he didn't. We're going to see another punting situation with Norton. He had a, a good booming punt last time. As Norton gets ready to punt, uh, Scott Pierce is down on the sideline. Scott? Well, Bill, the quarterback situation on both sides of the ball is not an injury situation. Neither Leverett nor Bostic are injured. I guess both coaches just want to try some new blood to see if they can get the offensive moving. Thanks, Scott. A big, big punt by Don Norton. That one hung up there for about three or four minutes. It was a great punt, and the fact that he fumbled the snap. He held on to it. He had all day. <laughs> he could have gone down to the end zone and got a drink real quick and come back and then kicked it. It, uh, it looked like for a second it might be blocked even. Doug Grant took it down there and had to back way up, gets across the 10-yard line. That's a big punt for Georgia Southern. It puts Savannah State knocking on their own end zone, not where they want to be right now with five minutes left to go in the first half. That's what a good punter can do. 5.02 says the clock, 12-0 Georgia Southern. As Savannah State comes up and Chad Alexander will try to move them once again. Well, they've moved well in the middle of the field. Let's see what he can do here. Down deep in their own backyard, he's going to keep it on a little quarterback draw there, and there's not going to be a whole lot of places to go as Darius Dawson closed the door quickly. And a couple of others getting up out of the pile as well. He got maybe a yard or two. They'll call it second down and nine. Ball resting just shy of the 15-yard line. Alexander brings him out. Clarence Phillips split wide to the left. As Alexander goes back to pass, looking over toward his left, now back to the right. He's going to fire it complete. It's going to go complete over there. This is where the defense is supposed to turn it up. To get the ball inside, they got the ball in the 20, about the 15-yard line. If they can hold Savannah State here, they know that the offense is going to get the ball back, possibly put some more points on the board. Diedrich Smith, the receiver on that play. Picking up a few more yards where it's going to be third down and four. Good tackle by Oglesby. Big play for Savannah State. They need a first down. They don't want to punt the ball back to the Eagles in this situation. Alexander back to pass. Looking, has plenty of time. Fires it over the middle. It's complete for the first down. Great catch. Was that Derek Diedrich Smith again? It sure was. 5'9", junior, 175 pounds. There you see the first quarter statistics where Georgia Southern is uh, leading in first downs, two to nothing. Passing yards, 14 to nothing. And rushing yards, um, Savannah State has 14, Georgia Southern 30, just about double. And uh, also for total yardage, Georgia Southern has 44, Savannah State 14. But Savannah State, the big factor, three turnovers for them, one turnover for Georgia Southern. And that one turnover, of course, turned into a touchdown, the only touchdown of the afternoon so far that uh, Mark Giles uh, scored for Georgia Southern as Alexander goes back to pass. Long one out there is intended to way over, way overthrown, was intended out on the field. Doug is Grant a major is Scott uh, Pearson down on the sidelines there. Swint, one of the uh, team physicians for Georgia Southern, and he says that the reason Bostick's out is just to give him a rest because of all the heat, and you see a lot of two platooning uh, second teamers in there for both sides of the ball. Coach is just trying to protect their players for what looks like turning out to be a defensive battle. I have news for you, Scott. They have third and fourth teamers in, too. <laughs> Some people I was looking for that we didn't have on the chart. That was a luxury Georgia Southern didn't have last week against Auburn. True. Second down and 10 as Alexander brings him up and is going to fire straight across, and Clarence Phillips wasn't looking for it in the least. A little miscommunication there, huh? Really was. He fired it very quickly behind Phillips, and um, had somebody defensively been there, would have, the defense would have scored again. He could have been... 19 to nothing real quick. So it'll be third down and 10. Once again, Savannah State's in a crucial point. They need a first down here. They don't want to punt the ball back to Georgia Southern. They don't want to give the Eagles an opportunity to put more points on the board. 
Michael Berry checking out of the ball game for Georgia Southern. Alexander back to pass again. Not much pressure. Did you see uh, Phillips open on the, on the hash closest to the Eagles sideline? I did indeed. But um, I don't think Alexander saw him. Darius Dawson, Shane Maxwell were over there to break things up. They're throwing a lot into uh, a lot of traffic, and that's kind of surprising. Trying to go to Calvin Thompson on that one, kid out of Savannah, a sophomore, and um, he just couldn't get to that football. Right. Has a lot of time to throw the ball back there. His offensive line is doing a good job keeping the Michael Berries back, keeping the Johnsons back, keeping the Eugene Hayes back, from putting any pressure on their quarterback. So Wright has a lot of time. He just needs to, I don't know, possibly be a little smarter with his pass selection. A little mix up in special teams. We, uh, we saw some of this last year with Savannah State. I'm not, not sure they, uh, they had the players in that they needed. All right, Savannah State wants to call a timeout. We'll take one, too. You're watching Georgia Southern and Savannah State with Georgia Southern leading by a score of 12 to nothing. We'll be right back. Time back in, 3.58 to go in the first half. Georgia Southern up 12 to nothing as uh, Riley Jones gets ready to punt it away for Savannah State. Not a very good punt at all. It's going to hit down and go out of bounds at about the 38, maybe 37-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 38-yard line where Savannah State, um, where Georgia Southern will put it in play from that point. Just got word from the sidelines, Terry, that uh, Bostic took a blow to the left shoulder a while ago, but he should return. Well, Southern's up by 12 right now. I think it's a smart move by Coach Stowers. We don't want the quarterback. Georgia Southern doesn't want the quarterback to get hurt and, and to be out for the remainder of the year, so why take a chance? You have good backups in McGrady and Huntley, so give them some playing time. You might use them later in the year. McGrady brings him up. He's got Lester Eford right behind him, and he's going to drop straight back to pass. Looking out there, he's going to have it complete to Don Hudson down the sidelines at about the 45 to the 42-yard line. We have a flag, Bill. Possibly but a holding. I think we're going to bring it all back. I think we have a holding on the running back, number 35, Lester Eford. I'm not sure there. That's about where they threw the flag. Yeah, Lester's looking over and shrugging to the sidelines like, hey, I didn't do that. And he's pleading his case. Is Don Hudson hurt on the sideline there? I see, uh, see him working on somebody. He took a shot just as he, um, as he was knocked out of bounds. And they're working on Hudson down on the sidelines. It's a big break for Savannah State there. You know, we talked about earlier that punt wasn't very, didn't look very good by Jones, but it was effective in the fact that he kicked it away from Oglesby. Oglesby, a proving punt returner. He's very good. They kicked it. I'm sure he didn't mean to, but he kicked it away from Oglesby and uh, didn't get a return out of it. So he netted about 40 yards on that. It was, yeah, you're right. It, it didn't look very pretty, but uh, indeed effective. So Georgia Southern's going to be backed up. It's going to be first down and 20. The ball back at about their own 23-yard line. McGrady back to pass. and is going to slip right down. Nobody touched him. He got a lot of pressure, though. Oh, yeah. That was Orlando Dean right on top of him, along with Tracy Sherman. Big 6'2", 265 junior out of Macon, Georgia. Scott on the sideline. Scott, what do you have? Well, Bill, you know, we noted before the game the narrower goalpost is one of the major rule changes. Also this year, two other rule changes for a penalty, as you saw on a holding. Instead of being 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, it's now 10 yards from the point of the foul, and that's helped to put Southern in a bigger hole. McGrady's going to run the quarterback draw. Got a nice, get some nice yardage back up to about the 20-yard line, but still a long, long way to go. That was Patrick Dean on the tackle for Savannah State. He had 10 tackles last year. They're still working it. Don Hudson's still down on the sidelines. I'd say 10 tackles last year, 10 tackles last week. Yeah. <laughs> 10 tackles last year, we wouldn't be bragging about it. That's true. Bill's Georgia Southern's third and forever before they get a first down. First down marker's on about the 50. Southern's now on about the 20. Third down and 19, two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, first half, rather as McGrady goes back to pass. Scrambling around, finally looks at somebody, founds Terrence Sorrell, Sorrell across the 32-yard line, but he is whacked immediately over there by Eric Allen out of Knoxville, the cornerback that brings him down, and it's gonna break up fourth down and still a long way from Tipperary. Well, they're spotting the ball in the 33-yard line. Puts them third and about 15. You got Norton back in the game again. He darn near lettered last week, I think a record nine punts. Yes, he did. Nine punts, 41 point, uh, 42 yard average. That's great. I don't think he wanted to punt as much this week, but looks like he's going to. 
Gets a fairly decent kick away. It's going to hit at the 35, bounce to about the 25. Oh. And going to be smothered over there. Not the wisest decision. Wouldn't you let that go? You, you should let that go because if it even nipped him, it was Georgia Southern's ball if they mm -hmm. fall on it. Sure. Norton w didn't act like he was very happy with that punt, but it was very good. And the fact that it got, he got a good roll out of it. In the stats, it doesn't say, well, this punt wasn't that good. It just says 42-yard average. I think Norton would be disappointed if it went 80 yards. <laughs> <laughs> that's the time of athlete that Don is, and that's good, I guess. It's going to be first and 10 from the 25-yard line for Savannah State. Chad Alexander still running things in there at quarterback. Alexander is going to pitch over on the left side to Cole. They want to get Cole outside. Kevin Whitley's going to miss him, but he's going to be knocked out of bounds by Jim Mutimer right there on the corner just as he was about to go out of bounds. Surprised Mutimer didn't get a flag on that one. That was, uh, that was close. He was about a step from the sideline. Uh, defensive back has to be careful in that, and that's a coach's nightmare. They don't want to see that. A flag in that situation would have given Savannah State a first down the ball on about the 35 to 40 with a minute 35 left to go in half. You're right. Mutimer is... Uh, you know, it was a very aggressive player, and that could have uh, that could have easily cost him 15 yards. 135 to go in the first half, as Alexander brings him up. It's 12 to nothing. So far, the only scoring on the offense has been by David Cool's field goal. Completed pass, almost a first down, about a nine-yard pickup. They may give him first down yardage. Looks like it is going to be a first down. Dedrick the ball Smith. completed to Dedrick Smith over there in the flats. Ball just across the uh, 35 to about the 36-yard line. First down, Savannah State. Coach McInerney and Coach Spangler, two defensive coordinators, has to be telling his team right now, hey, let's not play lax the days of the ball here. We don't want Savannah State to score. Savannah State, on the other hand, Coach Davis is probably saying, hey, let's get something on the board so we can come back here in the second half and show Southern that we come to play. State calls a timeout here. There's 89 seconds to go in the first half, 12 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern. 129 to play. You know, Bill, we've talked about earlier about the size. For instance, Savannah State's offensive back split ends are 5'10", 185 average. Georgia Southern, 5'11", 184. Now, the defensive line at Savannah State, 6'1 and a half, 259, whereas our defense, Georgia Southern's defensive line is 6'217". There's a little bit of a difference there. Here's where the factor is. The offensive line for Savannah State is 6'2", 274. Georgia Southern's offensive line, 6'1", 249. So Southern's defensive line is going at 217 against the offensive line of Savannah State at 274. There's a little bit of a difference there, wouldn't you say? There is indeed, and it can uh, make a difference over the course of a ball game. Right now, Southern up by a 12 to nothing score. I want to remind you that you can enjoy Georgia Southern football all season long. Ticket sales, the box office is open from 8 to 5 every day. Here in Statesboro, you can call them at 681-0123. There's an 800 number for you folks out of town, 544-2798. That's an 800 number, 544-2798 as Alexander goes back to pass. And again, he's got Diedrich Smith wide open for another first down at about the 48-yard line. And Rodney Oglesby finally wrestles him to the ground. Once again, a nice play. And again, as you were mentioning, Terry, just that drop back pass has been very, very effective, not the rollout. Staying in the pocket, he's getting great pass protection from his offensive line. We, we mentioned earlier their size. Maybe that's making a difference up front with Georgia Southern's smaller defensive front. Now let's talk about those guys up front. Steve Acock at center and Kent Holcomb, Ernest Green, Bernard Green, Dexter Williams sprinting out once again. Here's Alexander planning, throws it way downfield, way over. Everybody was intended for Diedrich Smith, but not a soul in the world could have caught that. An incredible statistic for Georgia Southern. We were talking about how good Terrence Sorrell is at catching passes. He caught one just a while ago, and he has caught at least one pass in the last 18 ball games that Georgia Southern has played. <laughs> Gotta like that. A lot of those are, the, as you mentioned, those deep passes that go for touchdowns or go for very big yardage on that, Terry. Alexander brings them up. It's going to be second down and 10 at the Savannah State 48-yard line. Alexander. The drop back pass once again. He's looking for Clarence Phillips. Phillips catches it, yes. And Scott on the sideline. Scott? Bill, we got a couple of injury updates for you. Even though we said that Charles Bossett was just taken out to be given a rest, that's the official word, but I did hear that he took a pretty good shot to his shoulder, sort of aggravated an injury. They're just going to let him rest that shoulder for a little bit. And Don Hudson has a sprained left ankle. Just what the Eagles needed. Savannah State can continue to push the ball towards the zone. They can at least get three points on the board, and that's what Coach Davis needs right now. 
Brian uh, Shuey be the guy that would do it. And Georgia Southern's going to jump right off sides. And I think Savannah State's just going to try to run this play and do what they want to as Mutimer breaks up the play very, very nicely. And they're at the other end of the field. But it's going to be offsides for Georgia Southern. It looked like um, jumping offsides for, um, for Georgia Johnson. Southern. Ronald Johnson. But he could have avoided that even though he jumped across the line of scrimmage. He mm -hmm. did not make contact. He had enough time to get back. Instead, he thought he was caught, put his hands up in the air, and snapped the ball in there. Indeed, he was caught. Ronald Johnson, outside linebacker out of Hinesville, offsides. But it looked like it was going to go for even bigger yardage than that. Mutimer made a great play down there. Johnson is one of those defensive ends that, that like Barry, they converted from linebackers. Not big in size, but very quick, very fast, can burn a big offensive lineman. Chad Alexander is going to be operating out of the shotgun. Back to pass once again. Plants, fires, got Diedrich Smith out there at the 35-yard line. Smith is going to go down. It's going to be, um, oh, I'd say about three or four yards short of a first down. Big play for Whitley there. Not only did he make the tackle, he kept the receiver from getting to the sideline and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Ticked off a good five, six seconds there. 12 seconds to go in the first half, and Savannah State's had to burn a timeout. They're going to try to run one more play, Terry? They don't have a choice, Bill. I don't, I don't think that their kicker right now has the leg for a 52-yarder. For so I would think that they'd throw <laughs> it uh, probably, you know, I wouldn't doubt to see him throw it near the 20-yard line, near the 15-yard line, maybe just to get out of bounds. You have five seconds left to go on the clock. Your kicker's in his range. You can at least get three points on the board. You're only down by nine. You can come back in the second half and things could turn. Nice opening day crowd for, uh, for Georgia Southern. You see the Savannah State fans and also the Georgia Southern fans here as they, um, hey, wave hello to everybody. <laughs> well, the students don't come back to the 19th. That's when school starts. They should uh, come around probably about the 15th in that area, and that's next week. And, of course, we'll be out of town on that weekend. But uh, I think the fans like most is, is the Green Hill, sitting on the hill. I don't know if they like that better than the stands. I think they do. You can see a lot of folks. I'm sure they probably have tickets in the stands. They just uh, just go out there and scatter themselves along, and we'll see what happens. So Brian Chewy would handle the kicking chores if Savannah State does decide to kick it, but uh, let's see what they're going to do here. As Alexander goes back to pass, fires way downfield. It's going to be dropped, intended for Clarence Phillips down at the 11-yard line. He couldn't get to it. Rodney Oglesby and Mark Giles over in the vicinity to help break things up. But uh, Phillips was falling down, the ball thrown a little bit behind him, Terry. Yeah, it, was crossed, it was thrown across the middle of the field, and I, I, mark, I remarked about that earlier. Kerry Johnson was open at the left hash, and that would have been a pretty good spot for him. They're going to try to go again, firing it down the sidelines, goes to Cole, and he goes out of bounds about the 28-yard line, and there's one second left on the clock, so I presume you run on the field goal team and we try, have a flag. To, try to put something up, but there are flags down over here. And if it's against Savannah State, that definitely takes them out of the old field goal range, even though they're questionable at this point. Signals against Southern. Bill, I think we had 12 men on the field that time, and boy, that really hurts. Jeez. That's not what you want to see here. I don't recall Georgia Southern doing that in a long time. And that's a sign of a good club where you don't have a lot of mix-ups on the special teams. But you do have a tendency to have that at the beginning of the year because you're getting everything organized. Coach Davis signaling over on the sidelines. Take that darn thing. One second to play in the first half. Was there a double penalty there, Bill? May have been. I don't know. I just saw, saw him taking it out. So it's going to be a 47-yard attempt for Brian Shuey, six-foot sophomore out of Savannah. Shuey. Blocks it, and it's blocked. Southern needs to get on that ball. Southern needs to get on that ball. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown, Bill. Nope. Is it or it's going to be down? They're going to down it at the four. And that's going to be the end of the quarter, is it not? You're right. The first half, you can't advance that one. You're right. Now, if that was not blocked and it did not go to the goal line, that would have been a live ball. Savannah State could have jumped on it and scored. Yeah. And you can't... Um, well, I tell you, you can't get careless. So go down to the sidelines right now. Uh, Tim Stower standing by with Scott Pierce. Scott? Yes?
Thanks, Bill. Well, Coach, you go into halftime leading 12 to nothing, but nine of those points have come off a big defensive play. Well, eight of them have. You know, we did get, get one extra point. You got to give them all the credit they can on offense because we're just kind of slopping around on offense. We're saving the moral victory from last weekend. Uh, we think we're good. Uh, we just had a guy run in. We just had too many men on the field in a crucial situation in the football game. We're not playing very well, and this is exactly what I was scared of uh, after last week's game. What's the condition on your starting quarterback, Charles Boston? We just, it's hot down here. We just took him out because uh, we want Derek. We feel comfortable with Derek in the game. We want everybody fresh for the second half. Good luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. First, along with Terry Harbin, the second half of the Georgia Southern Savannah State game. Georgia Southern leading by a score of 12 to nothing. Took the opening kickoff. It was Shafton Fraley returning it for a couple of yards back up to about the 18-yard uh, line. So um, Georgia Southern will start from there. Georgia Southern starting off the second half with the football, Terry. Well, uh, Georgia Southern didn't do in the first half. I don't think what they expected to do. They points up against the board against Auburn and only 12 against Savannah State, and that wasn't all offensively, so they can't be satisfied with that. Charles Bostic back in there running the offense, and it's going to be given to Lester Eford as he goes forward and fumbles the football. Savannah State says they have it. That's what the referee said, too. And they do. And falling on the ball for it for James Savannah Gayton. State. That was James Gayton. Bill. It was just a matter of the, uh, the defensive lineman yanked the ball out of it, uh, Lester's hands as he was falling down. The ball's on the ground. Somebody's got to jump on it. Lawrence, Mississippi. Savannah State's in great field. This is what they wanted to do. I'd say so. Ball just outside the 20-yard line as Alexander is going to bring him up. And the Georgia Southern fans finally trying to come to life and maybe get that defense to stiffen up a little bit. Everybody's just soaked out there. And a pass to wide open. Uh, Derry uh, Cole, Lucius Cole out there in, uh, from Richmond, Virginia, and his ball was way underthrown. I think we'll see a lot more of that in the second half because Lucius Cole is not only a great running back, he's a great receiver. We mentioned it earlier in the first half. Watch for Cole in the flats. They come out, hit Cole in the flats. If he had caught it, we could have had a score on the board for Savannah State. Instead, it's second down and 10 from the 21-yard line. Chad Alexander looking him over. Georgia Southern with that four-man front. Alexander straight back to pass, looking, fires over. It's intercepted. Bounced off, and Paul Sickley came up with it as it bounced right out of the hands of Diedrich Smith. The ball was so hard. <laughs> the ball was thrown so hard, Terry, it just bounced right off Smith. Well, the receiver's supposed to use their hands, not their chest. <laughs> and in that case, that tells you exactly why. We mentioned earlier that Cole was in the flats. Here again, Cole was open in the flats. They might have should have gone back to him again. They didn't, and they paid for it. Big interception by the outside linebacker from Dalton, Paul Sickley. And Georgia Southern, not in the greatest field position in the world, but they have the football, and that's the important thing, is Bostic is going to give it off straight up the middle once again to Eford, and he's just going to sort of bound his way forward to about the 10-yard line. Georgia Southern was very lucky in that situation that Savannah State didn't get any points on the board. However, the offense needs to come through and produce for Georgia Southern. The defense has done it so far. You know, typically, Bill, at this time of the year, your defense is ahead of your offense anyway. Last week, uh, Georgia Southern made it seem like it was the opposite way because they turned 17 points out in the first half against Auburn. Came out this week, I think, maybe expecting a little bit of a cakewalk in Savannah State there, and it looks like um, Bostic is going to have some good running room. He may have turned up field uh, maybe a little too late, didn't get as much yardage as he thought he should have, stumbled and uh, fell across the 15-yard line. On that, on that play, Bostic tried to do what Leverett's been trying to do all day until they brought Wright in, and that's get around the corner. If the pass is there, throw it. If not, tuck it up and run, and hope right they're contained. A couple of new guys going in for Georgia Southern, bringing in the plays, among them James Williams, a sophomore fullback out of Thomasville. As Bostic gets the call, the give is going to go straight over to, uh, no. I don't think he got the first down. The ball was given to Darrell Hopkins. I don't think he got it either, and that's where your big men up front, that Ken Wright, the Jerry Bird, 6'1", 265, and 6'1", 260 comes into play. Another putting situation, Bill. So just like that, Georgia Southern has to give up the football. That's not, um, that doesn't bode well for getting that, uh, that defense staying on the field in this heat either, as Don Norton is going to be punting almost from his goal line. He needs to get a good one off here for the Eagles. Bad snap. Good hang time on this one. 
Jones takes it at the 50. Going to cut outside. He's going to get a couple more yards up to about the 45-yard line as Ronald Rogers takes it up there, the kid out of Jacksonville, and is knocked out of bounds at around the 45-yard line. Georgia Southern. Brad Allman made the tackle. He took a heck of a hit, but at least he brought the man down. Brad Allman's one of those special teams players we mentioned earlier about Brandon Rice, Chuck McClure. Those guys get down the field. They're going to make something happen. That's the kind of players you need on the special team. Third quarter just underway. Georgia Southern up 12 to nothing, but this is the second time Savannah State's had the football. Once on a fumble, now on a punt, as the give is going to go faked in there in the middle as Alexander tries to turn up field. Gets maybe a yard. Curtis Gordon, Michael Berry made that play happen where they made him tuck it up. He couldn't give the fullback the ball like he could on the first option. Had to take the ball, cut it up. There's Darius Dawson. That's what your defense needs to do to play against the option offense. Dawson, 6-1 out of Moultrie, sophomore. Played as a true freshman, I might add. Terrific, so did Alex Mash. And we heard from him last year on a number of occasions. Especially in the championship game. Did we ever. And the give is gonna go to Cole. Cole cuts up field on the right side. Now left side, that is, of the line and gets up to about the 42-yard uh, line. It's gonna bring up third down and maybe about three or four. Looks like Paul Sickley on the tackle. Also, Scotty Davis making an appearance for Georgia Southern at linebacker. Made Dawson. a good hit. Big play for Savannah State, third and five. Alexander back to pass, pressured, fired downfield. Ball was intended out there for Doug Grant. Again, underthrown, but some nice pressure by the Georgia Southern defense, Terry. That's what happens when you, when you brought the line of scrimmage. We blitz the linebacker or two that leaves your middle open. Savannah State recognized it. However, they couldn't complete the pass. If they could have, Savannah State might have been had a score in that time. Nice hand for the defense. They have 10 men on the line, Bill. Block the punt. Maybe trying to block it. He gets it away. Nice end over end kick going to be taken by Rodney Oglesby at the 10 yard line, but he's got no place to go. Got to the 15 and then back to the 13 before he was knocked down. They may mark it at the 14 yard line. Our sp Georgia Southern special teams, they put 10 on the line of scrimmage. If they're going to block them, they bring all of them. If not, they usually drop one or two back out. So they at least set up a decent wall for Oglesby, mm -hmm. who I said earlier is a proven punt returner. Oh, yeah. Possibly get behind the wall and turn yeah. it up. But he had no place to go on that one. Had he been able to get maybe an initial burst right through that uh, first surge, he could have gone. But uh, as a rule, but as he was, he didn't. Bosick's going to bring him up. It's going to be first down, and they stopped the play because the chain gang wasn't ready on the other side. Well, that's the type of punt that Oglesby's looking for. It was a low, short punt. He could possibly field it on the run and get the ball outside the 20. But like we mentioned, he didn't have any blocking. Bostic sets him down. Going to give it right ahead to Eford, and there's no place to go. I'll tell you, that um, Tiger defensive line is really something else. Jerry Bird getting up out of there, out of Darlington, the big senior there. Ken Wright again, Bill. Savannah's defense is fired up. They're determined they're going to shut down the offense. They see that even with the first half that they had, they only gave up 12 points. That's got to that's make them feel pretty good. And they didn't really give up the 12 points. They're playing a shift to the left on that, Bill. Bostic's changed something, and the give is going to go ahead to Eford. Eford breaks away across the 25-yard line, picked up a big first down as he gets across the 25 to about the 26-yard line before Kelsey uh, make that uh, front uh, fountain is going to bring him down over there just across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. The Eagles needed that one. They sure did. You see, Bostic recognized the shift. I just mentioned it. They shift to the left, anticipating possibly a bad judgment call. The quarterback saw it, changed the play, ran on the other side, they got 10 yards. 10 minutes to go in the third quarter, 12 to nothing Georgia Southern. Moving just a little bit, firing out in the flats to Belzer. Belzer is gonna go down and his knee is on the ground and a late hit in there, but uh, no flag. Again, we've, we've seen some late hits today without flags being called, Terry. Well, they've been borderline and uh, yeah. it's got a judgment call there. Ulysses Smith came in and they 
ruled momentum, and that was that. The reason that, didn't, that play right there didn't, didn't work for Georgia Southern was the big defensive lineman, Mark McClendon, got his hands up. Ballstick had to throw it over him, caused the ball too long to get to the receiver. Belsinger couldn't do anything. And he was wrapped up right away. Give a head to Lester Eford. The human bowling ball just goes rolling right along up toward first down yardage. He gets across to about the 35. They're probably going to mark it right around the 35-yard line where it's going to be third down and maybe a yard or so. Bill, this is where your coaches in the press box comes into play. They're seeing how Savannah State's lining up on defense. That particular time and the one before, there was a big gap up in the middle. Obviously, a coach saw it, wired it down, they ran it right in the middle, and there he is. Third down, one in motion. They give once again to Eford. Eford breaks through, first down yardage, up toward the 45, to about the 44. Georgia Southern is finding the gaps in the Savannah State defense. There again, Savannah State shifted the left side of the line over a little more, caused a gap, the off guard. And suddenly the crowd beginning to get into it. That was a big play for Southern because they didn't want to punt right there. They need more points on the board if they want to possibly get a route. Savannah State's defense has got to come through and shut them down, though. And you want to give the Eagle defense a little bit of a rest as Bostic goes straight back to pass, getting pressure a little bit. He's going to run. He's going to go to midfield. He'll be out of bounds inside Savannah State territory at about the 48-yard line. Picked up, uh, oh, maybe six, seven yards on the play. It'll be second down at about four. Bostic recognized, and that is another sign of maturity like we saw last week, that he didn't have to throw the ball. He could get eight yards, get seven yards, and get out of bounds. Gives him a second and three situation. Your offensive coordinator has to love a second and three. Darren Willis checks in the ball game for Georgia Southern. He's split out to the left. Chuck McClurg split wide to the right. And the give is going to go straight ahead once more to Lester Eford. Eford getting a couple of yards, very close to first down yardage. They'll mark it at the 46-yard uh, line. So they'd be about a yard shy, maybe even less than that. Third, less than a yard. The offense just needs to put together a drive, Terry. Sure do. I just noticed that Rex Nott has just come out of the game. He's gone to the bench. A couple of trainers are working on him. It might be a matter of heat. Timeout call, Georgia Southern. Georgia. Georgia Southern wants to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Georgia Southern leading in the third quarter to our 12 to nothing. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Georgia Southern leading 12 to nothing. Third quarter, Rex Nottage, one of the big offensive linemen on the sidelines right now. A little bit of, um, just uh, as, you, as you mentioned, Terry, some heat uh, problems there. Scott Pierce down along the sidelines as well. And uh, Scott will probably have a little training report for you on that here momentarily. We have seven minutes and 47 seconds to go in the third quarter, and uh, Georgia Southern needs to put together a drive, and we're seeing it right now. They're going to be third down and less than a yard to go. What do you call it here, Terry? Well, an obvious call, you need the first down. You don't want to be a fourth in inches and have to make a decision whether I throw my goal line offense in or do I punt the ball at midfield. Uh, Bill, to go back to the knotted situation, you're going to have that with offensive linemen, and that's where your depth comes into play. So Bostick's going to bring him up. The give is going to go to Eford. He gets outside. He has the first down. Bowling his way across the 45-yard line to about the 43 is where they're going to spot it. First down, Georgia Southern. They keep the football. Donald DuPont, Dante Myers in on the stop. DuPont, a Savannah kid. Myers out of Brandon, Mississippi. They get a lot of good junior college transfers at Savannah State, Terry, and that's why it's hard to scout these guys from year to year. And uh, these guys come in with a lot of good experience. They're ready to play when they get there. Year after year, Savannah State has excellent talent. And Bill Davis has done the job as the give goes straight ahead once again to Eford. Bill Davis is a great coach. Savannah State is very fortunate to have him. He's taken that program to another level. Earlier, Bill, we were talking, and he was making comments like, when he said he coached for Savannah State, people would say, where is Savannah State? Where is mm -hmm. Savannah? Now he says people know where Savannah is. People know where Savannah State is. Bethune-Cookman knows where Savannah State is. Boy, do they ever. Georgia Southern's finding out. they got to put together something here on offense. Give is going to go to Eford again over on that right side, kind of working him to death at this point. He gets up to the 40-yard line. Not too much, maybe a yard or two. A lot of work for, nothing, for, for hardly anything there, and uh, it's going to be third down and about eight. 
Shannon Sharp and Basil made sure that Georgia Southern knew where Savannah State was <laughs> oh, in 1989 geez. as they gave us a scare. They gave Georgia Southern a scare. They came in here and put on an air performance. Shannon Sharp, I think, set a record for reception yards that day in Allen E. Paulson Stadium. Sharp was unbelievable. Now playing for the Denver Broncos, of course, and doing a great job out there as Bostick brings him up. And Hopkins goes in motion to the right. Bostick rolling out, being pressured. He's going to run out of the pocket. He's got some yardage, but there's not much room as he's run down from behind. He did a lot of running for nothing. He's dragged down by Donald DuPont again from behind as he gets across the 40-yard line. And it's going to bring up fourth down. DuPont was the weak side cornerback in on that. He just followed him. And as a quarterback having to pause, look for your receiver, you can't get all the, the quickness off the line or the speed that you need to generate. The cornerback just happened to catch up to him. In this situation right here, you got Norton, the ball's on the 39. What he's going to try to do here is just hang it high, put it inside the 10 yard line, hope his guys get down there in time. Going for the corner, it looks like. Norton angling it for the corner. He's got good hang time on it, and it's going to go in the end zone, though. He got the kick he wanted. It's almost like a golfer trying to drop a pitch on the green. That, that punt, for instance, it hit maybe one yard deep in the end zone, but it spun backwards. And uh, that's what he wanted, but just about four yards too far. Derek Smith, Diedrich Smith down there looking for it and um, signaling a little bit of a fair catch, trying to keep the Southern players away from it. That fell into the end zone for the touchback. So it'll be uh, Savannah State's ball, first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Five minutes and 32 seconds to play in the third quarter, and it's still 12 to nothing, same as it was when we left you at halftime. Chad Alexander still running the offense. He pitches it back, gonna go to Cole. Cole drops it, gets it out of bounds very alertly, picks it up and runs out of bounds with it, not trying to pick it up and run and do anything fancy. That's when you get in trouble. A lot of uh, younger players panic on situations like that, Terry, and that's what costs them uh, losing fumbles deep in their own territory. Well, what the problem with Savannah State play that time was that his backs didn't get the blocks he needed. Number 40 on that, David Coleman didn't spring the block that he needed to, nor did the number 27, Doug Grant. Uh, possibly a poor, uh, obviously a poor pitch on the quarterback's part, but like you said, he did a good job, picked it up, got out of bounds. And some nice pressure from the Eagle defense, just to give that a little credit helps. where it's due here, <laughs> as Alexander goes straight back to pass once again, that drop back pass, and it's going to work fine as they get it over in the corner out there to uh, Doug Grant, and Grant's going to pick up uh, two or three yards on the play. It's just a five-yard out pattern. It's open in the flats right now. The linebackers are having a hard time getting over there. The cornerbacks aren't picking it up. I would look for Savannah State to do that a little bit more, maybe pick it across on the sidelines a little bit with those slant or those out patterns, and then pop it across the middle with a little cherry, little cherry slant. We may see it here, third down and four, big possession play for Savannah State. They want to keep that, um, they want to stay out on the field, of course, and they want to keep Georgia Southern's defense on the field as long as they can. Back to pass, Alexander has his man. Ooh. That's Diedrich Smith out there in the flats. He got very close to a first down. Diedrich Smith took a hit, but he got the first down. It. Yes. First down yardage. Yes, close. sir. Yeah, they're moving the chains up to about the 33 or 4 yard line. Determination on Smith on that part because Whitley had him by the jersey, was mm -hmm. trying to pull him back and was waiting for some help. And uh, Diedrich Smith knew where he needed to be and went after it. Got to hit him with a little more authority than that. And this is a time, this time of day where their where authority hitting is getting a little slim. Heat's beginning to get to him as Alexander goes back and he's going to give it off to Cole. Cole's got nowhere to go as the gap is closed very, very quickly. Eugene Hayes and uh, Paul Carroll read that it was a draw, hung back and made the tackle. That's what you do on a draw, Bill. Paul Carroll, a red shirt freshman caused a fumble last week against Auburn that Michael Berry recovered for Georgia Southern's second touchdown. That's something to put in the scrapbook right there. Isn't that the truth? And it was, it was nice, too. Good play. Savannah State comes up, second down and 10. Got no yardage on that last play. Back to pass once again goes Alexander. Fires right across the middle, and it's going to be intercepted out there. Intercepted by Paul Carroll. We were just talking about him. And fumble. Carroll's going to bring it back to about the 25-yard line. Is there a fumble on the play? Fumbled it out of bounds. Georgia Fumbled Southern out of bounds. Ball. Georgia Southern's ball. We were just bragging about Paul Carroll, and he comes up with a big interception, and uh, it was hard to miss it. It was thrown right at him. I tell you, uh, I mentioned earlier about throwing it across the middle. When I say throw it across the middle, I mean throw it to your receiver across the middle, ah. not to <laughs> well, the linebacker across I the see. middle. Well. So maybe it was a poor call on my part. I'm not sure. <laughs> little confusion there. 
Georgia Southern's knocking on the door again, though, Bill, and, and they've been knocking, but uh, they've had a few breakdowns. They do need to get it cranked up. And it's going to be McGrady back in at quarterback. McGrady's going to keep it. He's going to cut up field. McGrady's got some nice yardage down to the 20-yard line. A nice fake in there by McGrady. Most of the Savannah State team thought he had the football. That's what your option can do for you, and that's what a good option quarterback can do for the option. And Derek McGrady played it the way it was supposed to be played. He saw the gap, faked it, took it right up the middle, and got a good six yards. James Gaden finally brought him down. Get out of Florence, Mississippi. They got a lot of Mississippi kids on this team. McGrady going to give it to Eford. Lester's got nowhere to go. So it's going to be third down and three. Ken Wright coming out of the pile, stuff in the middle, all 260 pounds of Ken Wright. Hinesville kid. Hinesville puts out some players, don't you, Phil? Bradwell has an excellent, excellent high school football program. We know a kid from Brad Georgia Southern knows a kid from Bradwell, don't we? Hmm, Raymond Grossman? I think that's his name. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> McGrady, the pitch, going to go on the outside. Nowhere to go. That was Donald DuPont coming up hard. But you also on that play had Orlando Dean, the, def the defensive end that we've talked about all day long with Ken Wright and Mark McClendon. He was pursuing along. He couldn't cut back. He took away the cutback lane, and that's what a good defensive end is. Steve Payne, losing yardage. David Cool back on. He'll try a 43, 42-yard field goal. It's his third attempt of the day, Bill. Hash marks come into play here. We Successful talked about that. Successful in his that. first try. Yeah, this is the bad angle we talked about. And let's see. Ball is up and I don't know. Yeah. Just didn't make it through. Looked like the wind caught it up there a little bit, Terry. But it's three points and it's 15 to nothing. And that was a big three points. It's hard, hard to be right there. Scott uh, Pierce down on the sideline. Scott. Okay, well, we ha did check on Bossett's condition. is just, uh, just pulling him out just to give him a little rest. They put McGrady in. The heat is draining some of the players, so they're making sure that they don't overwork the players as they're heading into a long second half. A little bit too, with a score of 15 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern. We'll pause for this timeout. Pointer by David Cool, and again we've seen um, uh, Bill Edwards here along with Terry Harvin. We have seen the. Uh, Smaller goalposts come into play where Cool missed a little bit earlier. Last week against Auburn, as a matter of fact, Terry, they missed 10 points in extra points and field goals. The goalposts are going to come into play, and so are the hash marks. We saw it just then. Uh, David didn't quite hit it the way he can, but he got lucky and got it through anyway. Cool is going to kick this one. It almost went out of bounds back there, way downfield, and Ronald Rogers picked it up. And... Uh, Maybe he should have let it just sort of go out of bounds and cost um, Southern a five-yard penalty, but he decided to run with it. It looked like he might have some yardage there, picking up some blocking as he came laterally across the field, but only got to the 17-yard line. Bill, on that play right there, the kickoff team did exactly what the coach coaches them to do. They keep their positions. In that case in particular, if he would have broke the containment on the far side, it could have been off to the races, but no, the, the end on the, on the kickoff team stayed where he should have been, and they made the tackle. Chad Alexander still running things that we haven't seen uh, later since the first half as he drops straight back to pass. Long pass downfield, intercepted by Rodney Oglesby. Back to the 40, the 35. Rodney with some nice yardage. Fumble, it out of Savannah bounds, State. Fumbles, it's picked up by Savannah State, and they have the football right back. They sure do. That was a great interception. Oglesby broke on the ball. It was, very, it was poorly thrown, but didn't see the guy coming from behind him. That's what a good wide receiver will do. Follow the guy behind him if he doesn't know you're there. Try to strip the ball. He did. Savannah State was lucky to hold on to it before he fell out of bounds. And even picked up several yards on the play. So it's going to be Savannah State's ball first down as we watch on the replay. Got a good break on the ball here, Bill. And here comes the wide receiver behind him. He knows exactly what he wants. See? And look at that beautiful recovery down there. By that was Doug, Doug Grant. Grant as Alexander goes back to pass. Rolls out, pressured, and has fired it to Grant. And Grant can't hold on to it. Ball very poorly thrown. A lot of pressure being put on back there. Bill, I'm not sure, but I think Oglesby should be nearing in the record or have caught the record of Taz Dixon interception at Georgia Southern. We might have to wait for a stat check from sports information director Matt Rogers 
Hopefully we'll get something on that sh uh, very shortly. Ronald Johnson, the outside linebacker, putting the pressure on Alexander just then. By the way, speaking of sports information director Matt Rogers, let's congratulate him and his staff for they did a survey last year, and we have one of the top ten press boxes in the country, Terry, and that includes Division I teams. We were one of two in Division I, I think, ranked up in there. And a fired way down the middle once again, way overthrown. It was intended down there once again for uh, Doug Grant. He, he might have seen the pressure a lot, but you know, he's still getting the time to throw the ball. He's just not making wide decisions. If he would just turn his head a little bit, look at Lucius Cole and the, and the flat, they're going to get five to eight yards and possibly more. Make Southern get out there, cover the flats. That's going to open your middle back up. They can cherry pick it through. Clint Abert again defending on the play, but there was no defense to be had because uh, the ball was way overthrown. Alexander said it's third down and ten. Back to pass again. Again, plenty of protection. And Rodney Oglesby intercepts it again. And this time goes right out of bounds at the 43-yard line. It's going to be Georgia Southern's football this time. Fumble immaterial. It's two in a row for Oglesby. you got to like that. But this time, he fell on the ground and wasn't about to run it. <laughs> I don't think he really had a chance That's to. That's true. Yeah, he was way up in the air. Best he could do is hope for him to catch that. There again, the defense is telling the offense, hey, we're giving you the ball back. Let's see something generated. Let's see if the offense can come through. This is where your senior leadership or your leadership on the defensive side for Savannah State, the Orlando Deans, the Mark McClendons need to come through. 90 seconds to go in the third quarter as Bostic goes back to pass. He's going to have some pressure. He's going to run. He runs out of the pocket, fires way downfield. Terrence Sorrell with the football and touchdown. There's a Sorrell we were talking about. He burned the cornerback. He had a good two steps on him. Bostic noticed it, pulled up, laid it right in there. That was a good pass by Bostic. Absolutely gorgeous play, and Sorrell played it to perfection. The first offensive touchdown of the afternoon. As Georgia Southern goes up 21 to nothing, David Poole can come on to make it 22 as Don Norton holds. Bill, you know. Cool's point is through and good. A good kick. Bill, I mentioned that Oglesby, I thought he was nearing that record. Well, I lied to you, Bill. He tied the record with his 12th interception. And then that last one was big number 13. He set a new career interception record for Georgia Southern, topping Taz Dixon's record. He Taz, uh, set that record at 12 from 1986 to 1989. So congratulations to Rodney Oglesby. 22 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern, and we'll be back right after this. It's a good-looking eagle right look there, eagle. isn't it, Bill? Kind of an eagle. I guess. <laughs> I think it was more like a, a hand puppet eagle. The Muppets are in Statesboro. <laughs> and if you'd like to enjoy Georgia Southern football as this kick goes way, way downfield, it's going to be brought out of the end zone by Rogers. Rogers trying to get it out. Mm, finally gets out and gets some pretty nice yardage. Ronald Rogers out of Jacksonville, bringing it out and almost back to the 20-yard line. Would have used a lot less effort if he had just taken the knee and they had to put the ball at the 20 to begin with. They'd have, um, <laughs> Wouldn't help his yard. average, though, would it? Yeah, that's right. And you know, we talked about Sorrell getting behind the guys. Obviously, somebody up in the booth, one of their coaches, assistant coaches, noticed it earlier. They went to it. Bostic did a good job holding back and just laying it in there. And that's what you need out of your quarterback. And Sorrell, just great concentration because down there, isn't the sun about, about in his face about this time of Sorrell day? Sorrell has great hands. Amazing. Great concentration as the give is going to go to Cole. Cole across the 20. Finally pushed out of bounds, ridden out of over there. And I think there's going to be a face mask being called on Georgia Southern. Scott, what do you have on the sideline? Bill, an interesting note on the series before that touchdown. Rodney Oglesby had an interception and fumbled the ball. Well, that interception tied him for career lead in interceptions at Georgia Southern. Then he gets another pick. That sets the new Georgia Southern career interception record. Thank you, Scott. By the way, if you'd like to enjoy Georgia Southern football, there are tickets, of course, still available for all the games. If you live in Statesboro, the number to call is 681-0123. 681-0123. The box office is open between 8 and 5 every day. For those of you outside Statesboro, you don't even have to pay for the call. The 800 number is 544-2798. 
5-4-4-27-98. And the national championship game is December the 21st right here at Paulson Stadium, no matter who's in it. And the pitch back is going to go to uh, Rogers, and Rogers, Ronald Rogers is going to be racked up back there behind the line of scrimmage as the defense starts to come to life. Michael Berry, among others, getting up off the bottom of the pile. That's kind of a surprising call, Bill. I thought they might try to throw in the flaps. They've been talking about it all day. They had a first and two situation. Now they're in second and five. Southern has been a pretty, done a pretty good job of stringing out their offense, keeping their option down. They haven't had a lot of rushing yards. I, I'm kind of surprised they did that. The first and two was because of the inadvertent uh, face mask penalty on the sidelines that we had mentioned to you just a moment ago before we went down to Scott. And Chad Alexander brings him up, looks things over. Georgia Southern in that four-man front. Alexander back to pass, being pressured. Fires it way off. It's going to be intercepted by Rodney Oglesby again. Oglesby ducks around a couple of guys. Oglesby out in the middle of the field. Hard to bring down, but down he goes at the 41-yard line, and the crowd really getting into this one, and this is something that Savannah State didn't want, Terry, not only for Georgia Southern intercepting, but getting the crowd in the ball. Game. I think it's turned into the Rodney Oglesby show. We have a flag on the field. I'm not sure what it is. I'm glad they'll give us the signal in a minute. But as I said, it's turning the Rodney Oglesby show. That's big number 14. Uh, that's pretty good, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, was it Kerry Johnson, I believe, uh, that was um, being um, was being uh, called for a penalty? And uh, Scott, what do you have? Well, we do have a, also another record. That's Oglesby third in this game. So that's a Georgia Southern record. Do want to let you know, you can see over my shoulder, Don Hudson out with an ankle injury, not responding to treatment, so he's not going to be back for this game. Oh, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Don Hudson out for the ball game. We hope he's going to be back. Don, recover quickly, okay? He took that shot on the sidelines after a nice run in the first half, and there you see it right there. They've got it all in that, uh, was that an air splint? Yes, sir. The ball, Don has switched sides of the ball. Last year he was a defensive player, playing a little defensive back. Now has moved to the offensive line. Instead of giving hits, he's receiving the hits. It looked like he took a bad one on the foot there. 22 to nothing, Georgia Southern. Eight seconds to go in the third quarter as Bostic is going to give it off here right ahead to uh, Lester Eford. And we were talking about those uh, single-game school records, the interception, seven set against UTC in the 1986 game. And that's Fourth the quarter, end Bill. of the third quarter. 22 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern. And we'll be right back. Back at Glen Bryant Field, Paulson Stadium, Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern is leading 22 to nothing as we start the final period of the day. Everybody on their feet. Well, let's say about three quarters of them anyway. <laughs> Holding up the four fingers and Georgia Southern on the move at about the 27 yard line as Bostic rolls to his left. Looking to pass, fires way downfield into the end zone to Belzer. No, out of the end zone in the back. He caught it but out of bounds, an official right on top of the play. Belzer made a beautiful catch, but it doesn't go on the record. Well, Bel Belzer's trying to plead his case down the end zone. I know y'all can't see it right now, but he's on his hands and knees saying he had it, but I don't know if he's hurt or he's begging. Looks like he's hurt, Bill. He looked like he might be hurt as we're gonna take a look at it on the replay. He's holding, I believe, his ankle down there. I think the ball knocked, might have knocked the air out of him when he fell on it, Bill. Watch him as he catches this. Boom, boom. I think the only reason they didn't call it a touchdown, you can't tell whether he had possession or not. Mm. I think when he hit the ground, the ball hit him in the, in the stomach, kind of knocked the air out of him. It was a great play, great effort on Darrell Belser. He's that possession receiver we were talking about earlier. He and, of course, his brother Tony have just uh, set record or after record at this and uh, take a look at all the sideline activities going on as the folks are, there's the <laughs> cheerleaders are sailing sure. the Frisbees into the stands. Who bought the Frisbees this year? I think it's Taco Bell. I'm not sure. The Taco Bell? I think that's why people were standing up early. You said three-fourths of them. Well, the three-fourths were on this side of the field, and that's where they're getting the Frisbees. Do tacos come with that? I'm not sure. Maybe you take it in. Yeah, Taco Bell providing the Frisbees. I always like to give plugs to the folks who help, um, who help out with those things because, uh, listen, those things aren't cheap, and they sail on oh, a couple of hundred of those into the stands. That comes to some dough. As long as they don't sail them out in the field during the game. That's I guess right. if we were in Cleveland, yeah. you can get dog, dog biscuits at the dog pound or Frisbees at Georgia <laughs> Southern. I don't know. Darrell Bells are coming off the field and getting a nice hand. Trainers out there. The crowd's picked up some, Bill. Uh, not towards the second half. I think more people are going to the hill and laying out, putting their blankets out, <laughs> enjoying the weather, maybe catching a tan at the same time. Let me give a nice plug again. We have some great high school bands in the area. The one from Wayne County put on one whale of a show at halftime. Rodney Oglesby with his three interceptions has set a school single game record. 
Uh, the previous one was two. And uh, firing right down the middle. Well, not down the middle, out on the sidelines. Pass is going to be complete. Clint? Chris Wright is a Chris true Wright. freshman, Bill. He's returning kickoffs, and he was introduced to college football against Auburn. It's a nice introduction <laughs> to return kickoff. Get out of Valdosta, though, so he's used to intense competition. You know, we made note of the Oglesby interception record. He's got three. He has intercepted two passes on 13 occasions. So. Unbelievable. And by the way, Taz Dixon, who had the previous record, is now one of the uh, assistant coaches. You think it rubbed off on Oglesby? Just a little bit. As we're going to keep it here. Georgia Southern rolling out to the right. Putting it away as Bostic gets inside the 10 to about the five-yard line. Should say inside the five to about the three-yard line. Bill, the yeah. other true freshman playing in the backfield is, is Shafton Fraley, and he made a good block on that, and then he took number 45, I think that's James... James Guyton out of the play and able to gap for Bostic to shoot up and get a few yards, making it second and goal. That's where the going gets tough, and Georgia Southern could just about put this thing on ice, and we could certainly use ice. As they give right straight ahead to Lester Eford, and Eford gets very close to the goal line, down to about the one. You can see just how close it is. Good sideline camera shot there. Bill, this is where Georgia Southern brings in the hosses. They bring out a few A-backs. They send in an extra offensive lineman or two, put a new number on them, make them a tight end. And then they usually go up and over. Last year was Joe Ross. The year before that, E.T. This year, uh, Daryl Hopkins. And Isaac Farrell has come in, who is normally your backup right guard. He's wearing now number 86. Normally he wears number 70, just as you were talking about. But the give is going to go to Lester Eford, and Eford gets close to the goal line, but he's not in. I think that was Daryl Hopkins on that was play, it? though, Bill. Okay. Uh, let's see who gets up. Number 25. Okay. I take that back. <laughs> okay. Daryl Hopkins it is. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. The crowd's begging, and Coach Stowers must have heard the crowd. Captain Fraley checking back in the ball game for Hoppy. And Isaac Farrell back in there in that short-yarded situation that you talked about. Crowd's on their feet. Fourth and goal. Pick it up. It's going to go to Fraley. Fraley does not get in. We had a problem on the snap there. Bostic didn't have his hands on it, fumbled it. I'm surprised they didn't call him down because I thought he went to one knee as he went to pick it up. So either way, Georgia Southern didn't score. Savannah State prevails. Uh, Savannah State did what they had to do, Bill. 22 to nothing it remains. 12.34 to play in the ball game. You know, watch it again. Bill, this is what I was talking about here. Watch the fumble from the snap. See, mm -hmm. I, I think he might have picked it up when he was on one knee. I'm surprised he didn't call him down to begin with. I think you're right. So Savannah State has the ball, but boy, a long, long way from Tipperary. 99 and a half yards away from where they want to be. And just a little quarterback sneak right across the middle there. Giving some breathing room, I think. And uh, it looked like Greg Leffert back in at quarterback. Yes, number seven's Eugene. back in. Yep, Eugene Hayes making the stop for Georgia Southern. Bill, I mentioned earlier in the first half when the ball's down at this end of the zone, the defense has a tendency to pick it up a notch because they know they have the opportunity to either score themselves or let their offense score. This is where the defense, as I said, will turn it up a notch. Second down, eight. Pitch back. Going to go to Rogers. Rogers trying to turn around the right side, but Mark Giles won't let him. Giles clobbered him first, had him around the ankle. Giles playing the safety position, saw the gap, knew what was going on, had to come up, contain or string him out so your cornerback can come up and make the play, or your defensive end, your defensive tackle, that outside linebacker can make the tackle as well. That was Paul Carroll coming up to finish things off. So it's going to be third down and seven. Got maybe a yard on the play. They're calling it only third and eight, no gain. If nothing else, they need to get the ball out of the goal little area to give, the guy, to give their punter a chance back there. He definitely is going to be standing back there along the, along the back line, isn't he? Leverett rolling out. Going to be tripped up. He gets across the five-yard line, but not anywhere near a first down. Paul Carroll is there, but uh, the guy on the ground making the tackle. He's got a few yards, so... Uh, is, the punter um, is going to be standing on his back goal line. I wouldn't be, well, it's 22 to nothing. I don't know if they'd take a safety in this situation or not. Probably wouldn't hurt any. Give nice. Southern the ball back, though, so that might not be a good decision. Ronald Johnson of Hinesville making the stop on that one. 
Southern has all 10 on the line. Let's see if they back any out, Bill. And Riley Jones in the back of the end zone gets it out. Not too much of a rush. Rodney's backing up, catches it at about his 43 yards. He has line, a good wall. Trying to get outside. I don't think he's going to make it. Bill, his wall that time was set up on the right hash, and Rodney elected to go to the left. I, I guess he didn't see it or, or what, but we do have a flag on the field, so we might have a clip or a holding. Neely Lovett and Ulysses Smith were right there to make the stop as Rodney tried to get outside but just uh, couldn't break containment there. And find out what the flag's all about. 10-26 to go in the ball game. 22 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern. We're going to get the signal from the referee clipping against the Eagles. Well, that hurts. That'll back them way up. Back to their own 38-yard line. Give Savannah State's defense. Uh, well, they're not so much pressure on them yeah. as far as the score. They're midfield. They can stop them, stop them here. Savannah State can get the ball back. They need to put the points on the board. But you know, they shouldn't be that disappointed. Going into the game, they knew they had to have a great performance. They need for Georgia Southern to have a poor performance. But Georgia Southern has not produced a lot offensively. But Savannah State hasn't come through on their end. McGrady back in at quarterback and back to pass. Long one downfield. Intended down there for um, Daryl Belzer. Belzer, but uh, way overthrown. Donald DuPont doing a great job uh, keeping Belzer back. And McGrady just sort of tossed that one away. That play right there, Bill, what he does is he has a good fake in there, and then he steps back. And what it does is it freezes the linebackers. They don't know whether to commit to a run because, you know, their first, first priority as a linebacker is to run. So they're coming up hard anyway when they see run. As soon as the quarterback drops back, that might leave the middle open. McGrady trying to give it in the middle, and he's going to be collared and brought down in a hurry. Tracy Sherman. Freshman out of Waynesboro brought McGrady down. He lost a couple of yards on the play, where it's going to be third and 10. They get third and 12. Just announced the attendance, I believe. It said 13,312. Something like that. Not bad for a crowd before the students get here. Especially with the heat today. Yes. And the Atlanta Braves involved in a pennant race and everything else, so a lot of folks uh, staying home as a give goes right up the middle there. James Williams, the James freshman. Williams. Freshman. And the that brings shirt. up a fourth down. Going to be fourth and uh, about a dozen. And what your punt team is thinking here is the punter wants to hang it high, get some good distance, but we don't want to give up the big play. And he did exactly oh. that. Wow. Oh, jeez. Look at that. That might have been out in center field against the Braves. What do you think? I think so. He'll be taken down there by Diedrich Smith. Smith trying to get outside. He does up to the 20, the 25. They finally run him out of bounds at near the 30. That's the scary part about kicking a ball that deep is you outpunch your coverage. However, Norton's punt hung up there pretty good. He so did. there's no excuse for that. What happened is he got around the, the defense, or he got around the end there. He broke containment. That's exactly what they work on in practice. That's what they're going to go back and, and point out in the film. As a punter, that's kind of frustrating, Bill, because you hit something that good, you want all of that as a net. That's yeah. a good 50-yard net. That's exactly what you want to keep. But he gets a good 15, 20-yard return, and that's very discouraging. I can see where it would be. Greg Leverett back in, junior out of Lincolnton. And the give's going to go straight up the middle to a fellow we haven't seen much today. And boy, he's going to get some nice big yardage as David Coleman, the fullback, Get out of Bruce, Mississippi. That's called, senior. It's called being lazy, arm tackling. <laughs> you see a lot of that when it comes to the, towards the end of the game, especially when you're winning 22 to nothing. 8:53. There's still a lot of time to play in this ball game. As Leverett's going to bring him up, we should be seeing a lot of substitutions here now for Georgia Southern. And the give once again is going to go to Coleman. Why aren't they giving it to him more all, <laughs> all day? You kind of wonder when he breaks a couple of them like that. Brad Allman's going to make the stop for Georgia Southern. He gets about a good four or five yards on that one. That's when you need to get some fresh legs in the ball game. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe about six, seven, second down Especially three. with the heat, you see the fans are waving in the crowd, keeping <laughs> themselves cool. Boy, isn't that the truth. It is a scorcher. Once again, Coleman, big yardage, once again. Brad Ullman brings him down. He goes across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. First down yardage. And the Tigers are on the move. Trying to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. They're down 22 to nothing. 
Eight minutes and the clock running. People are heading to their cars already, Bill. As the crowds get bigger and bigger, the traffic gets worse and worse. That's just one of the prices you pay, but ain't it worth it? Probably heading to the cars to crank it up, turn the air conditioner on, and turn it on the radio <laughs> so they'd rather listen to it. Going to listen to Nate. It hasn't been an offensive highlight show today, except for maybe with uh, the connection between Bostick and Sorrell. Other than that, the special teams have played a good part of the game and uh, the defense. A lot of people have had a chance to play, though. Sure have. That helps out. As Leverett brings him up. Second down, five. Leverett fakes into the middle. Going to pass right over the middle, way overthrown. So nobody had a chance to get to that one. Intended out there for Kerry Johnson from Atlanta, but he had no chance to get to it. Ball was in the end zone. Nice coverage on the play for Georgia Southern. Bills, both teams' offensive productions haven't been too uh, swift today, and they should be frustrated. Savannah State had a great game against Bethune-Cookman. They put some uh, stats on the board up there. Georgia Southern did well against Auburn in the first three quarters. So uh, it's got to be pretty frustrating for an offensive coordinator. Leverett pitching it back over on the right corner to Lucius Cole. The junior out of Richmond, Virginia, gets a couple on the corner where it's going to be fourth down. Scott on the sideline. Scott? Well, Bill, the sun has come back out down here. The clouds have moved away, and the heat is a very big factor. You can see the linemen when they come off the field really just huddling together, just trying to get cool as best they can, wrapping towels over their head. Also, one note, number 30, Paul Sickley, playing defense right now. See the interesting wrap job? He has a hip flexor, but as you can see, he's able to keep going. Jeez. Well, Sickley's such a great defensive player as Leverett breaks loose and is going to get down to about the 20-yard line. He's going to be knocked down, and uh, in fact, a couple of guys are getting up very, very slowly, and that includes, uh, looks like, uh, Michael Berry getting up very slowly on that play. Darius Dawson as well. Yeah. You're seeing some fatigue out there on the part of the Eagles defense. Uh, Maybe ought to run some freshmen out there. A lot of arm tackling. Savannah State's the offensive backs are taking advantage of it. And somebody wants a timeout, and it's Georgia Southern. Looks they like uh, the defensive coordinator, Coach McInerney, decided he wants to talk to his team. Isn't that the truth? Well, Georgia Southern leading 22 to nothing with uh, six, it looks like about six and a half minutes to play in this ball game, and we'll be right back. The score's wrong, the score's wrong. You got it on Savannah State. Georgia Southern 22. Savannah State trying to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. Bill Edwards back along with Terry Harvin and Scott Pierce on the sidelines, and it's going to be Leverett dropping back to pass, rolling out. He's going to find some running room to the 15 and gets upended across the 15 down to about the 13-yard line. Turning him upside down, among others, was Ronald Johnson out of Hinesville. Lucius Cole on that play took Michael Berry out. Michael Berry thought he was going to try to stretch it out, created a gap. Leverett saw it, shot through it, got a good six, seven yards. He did indeed. It's going to be second down and two. Ball placed down at about the 13-yard line. Savannah State knocking on the door. And the fire out there in the flats. Nice completion to Doug Grant. Grant gets inside the five to the four-yard line. The ball is going to be placed down at the four. First and goal for the Tigers. I imagine during that timeout, the de co-defensive coordinator, McInerney, was probably telling his Eagle defense, hey, look, guys, we got a shutout. Let's keep it that way. Turn it up a notch. Let's play ball. Keep them from scoring. Well, we'll have to see. First and goal, five and a half minutes to go on this one. And the give is going to go straight up. No, it's not. It's going to be a fake into the middle, and it's going to be Leverett with the score. Had us all faked out that time. Really did. Faked it in the middle to David Coleman. Beautiful. And I think that's what most of the defense went with as well. There was a big hole there. And when Leverett kept it, he went into the end zone for the touchdown. Coach Davis probably told his offensive squad during halftime, uh, during that timeout, hey, look, let's put some points on the that's board. That's right. You turn it up a notch. And they did exactly that. 22 to 6. They're going to go for the two point conversion. The fire and back into the end zone. The back of the end zone is not going to go. Fire ball was way overthrown. Bill, that was a fake field goal. What a lot mm -hmm. of teams do is they line their linemen and all but three players up on the left hash. They go ahead and put their kicking unit up in the middle. That caused the defense to have to shift. 
normally the team, both teams will shift over, but sometimes in a case like that, they won't, they'll catch a defense off guard, they'll sneak it in. Georgia Southern obviously knew what they were gonna do, practiced on a lot, were prepared, and stopped it. Worked well, they tried to go to uh, Flournoy in the back there, Eric Flournoy, and the ball was way overthrown, and he was well, well covered. There was hardly any chance of him catching that football, so it makes it 22 to six. Savannah State would have had to go into a two-point conversion at some point anyway if they were managed to even managed to catch up. So maybe they thought they'd catch Southern off guard at that point. Bill, I, I mentioned earlier that a true now, freshman was returning kickoff, number 21. His name is Chris Wright. He was introduced to college football returning against Auburn. Take a look at the replay on that. This is what I'm talking about. Now watch him shift. Now see, they just pull it out and they throw the ball. Poor thrown pass, but he was covered by Whitley. Mm -hmm. And when you're covered by Whitley, it was rarely a chance of catching it there on, on many occasions. And as we said, the ball was out of the end zone anyway. So here comes, uh, I thought they would try an onside kick on this one, but they don't. Maybe they're just going to let it roll out of bounds and there's going to be a penalty on the play. Southern can either take it at that point or they'll have to re-kick. However, Bill, I don't see a flag. Oh, there's the flag. Okay. They just dropped it. Southern's player we almost picked it up. Shuby's going to have to kick it over again. Brian Shuey, the kicker from Savannah. Sophomore, six footer. Stands are getting bare. The Adam's not over yet. Yeah, that's right. I don't blame the folks. They say, look, we can, uh, we can listen to Nate and Frank tell us about it in air conditioned comfort, as you were mentioning. Either that or Savannah State's radio. Yeah, that's right. Looks like Derek McGrady's going to finish the game for Southern. McGrady brings him up. A lot of substitutions in there. Looks like a lot of new folks out there on the offensive line. As McGrady gives it straight ahead. Not much there. It's James Williams, the fullback. Williams just sort of bulls his way. If he got a yard, he was lucky. All Southern wants to do here is Run the ball. Let's run the clock out. Get out of here. Go back. Look at the films. Regroup. Get ready for in Monroe, Louisiana against Northeast. Five minutes and six seconds to go in the ball game. And at the end of the third quarter, there you see the statistics. Georgia Southern trailing in first downs. But, of course, the time of possession, 20 minutes for the ball game. Pitch back is going to go to Daryl Hopkins. Hopkins trying to come around on the sweep. There's going to be a clipping call over on the right side. And I believe it's going to be against Avery. Well, Bill, I don't think that was a clipping. I think they're going to really? call a holding, and I think they're going to call a holding on the freshman, Chris Wright. Okay. Bill, an important stat here is the turnovers. Savannah State College has eight turnovers. Georgia Southern's giving the ball up three. Can't win a ball game turn up, turn the ball over eight times. You Let's really can't. See what they call here. You're right, the holding call over there. It was very blatant. He almost tackled the, 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 the line, defensive linebacker. I thought there. he was going to get called for a clip on it. Spit it, out. it was Nick Norris, I think, they're calling him. He came up quick to plead his case, so he, he must have been guilty. <laughs> Take that back. It was Chuck McClurg over there. Nick Norris plays for Savannah State. He wouldn't have gotten it. I don't think so. They denied the penalty, which means they're going to take the down. Savannah State says we want the football back. Four minutes and 40 seconds, the clock rolling. It's third down and 10, so they're going to take a chance on the defense holding them here. As McGrady goes back and he tries to, I thought he was going to hand it off to a lineman for a second there. Manages to get about five yards up to the 40-yard line, but it's not going to be nearly enough. He still has five to go. He's lucky he got out of that situation alive because what had happened on that play is Savannah State quarterback, cornerback Eric Allen walked up on the line of scrimmage and blitzed. He tripped or he would have had a sack and would have caught Derek McGrady by the blind side. It looked almost like he was trying to hand off to his left guard, Drew Lovell. I think he was and just trying to get out of there with his I think life. he was. <laughs> and Norton standing back there, going to kick again. Well, they're going to take a delay here to back the ball up. Norton, well, maybe not. They're going to try to run as much time off the clock as they possibly can. It's rolling now. Fair catch being signal four down there and taken by Riley. Good punt by Norton. That's what you want to do. Get the ball inside the 20, hang it up high, make them fair catch it. 
what they did when I thought they were taking the delay of game penalty was they were just letting the time clock tick down as long as possible so Savannah State has, <laughs> doesn't have a lot of time to work mm -hmm. with. Ronald Rogers on the punt there. On the punt re receiving there. Ronald from Jacksonville. And Greg Lebert probably going to finish out the game for Savannah State. Three minutes, 44 seconds to go. They trail 22 to 6. Lebert going to pitch. Waited a little late. Pitched it out to Cole, and Cole was wrapped up and knocked down right there on the spot. Brad Allman on the tackle. Bill, they're bringing in some of the second, third stringers. They let them get some playing time. Those fresh legs in there. Allman and Chris, uh, Clint Avery get a lot of playing time. And you're right. That's what gets you. They're going to try Cole over on the right side, and there's not going to be much room. He gets maybe a couple of yards. It's going to bring up third down. We'll stop the clock at 3.06 to go. David Rocco on the tackle there along with Gene Hayes. Gene Hayes is another one of those athletes back in the defensive backfield that mm -hmm. I was talking about. Yeah. They bring him in a lot of, a lot of passing situations. So they're getting a lot of playing time. Number 18's in the game. Sean Austin, he plays a good cornerback. We got Averett and Brad Allman at the safeties with Gene Scott at that other cornerback. Mm -hmm. You're right, you don't lose much talent there with guys like Austin and some of the others. Leverett's gonna roll out. Thinks about passing for a second, but he's gonna be wrapped up down there. Not much, not much. You got Curtis Gordon getting off the bottom of the pile. Where your middle linebacker Bill comes into play. What he does, he he kind of scans the line of scrimmage as the quarterbacks are running down, trying to sprint out. He's getting he's there for cutback, along with that backside linebacker who's coming to catch take away that underneath pass. The middle linebacker's right there for the cutback. Worked like a charm that time because they brought up fourth down and about two. Got ten on the line of scrimmage. They drop back four. They're going for a return here. And Rodney's going to catch it over his shoulder at the 35. Good Goes block by Allman. 30. Good block by Allman. Rodney's down the field. Cuts back inside. Going to get across the 30-yard line down to about the 28. That's the wall we were talking about earlier. We were That's the wall we were talking about earlier. That was a beautifully set up wall right on the hash on Georgia's southern side. Oglesby knew it was there. Waited for his block. Brad Allman threw, sprung the block. Oglesby turned it up a notch, got down to about the 25 to 30. And a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be a clip. Mm. Georgia Southern. And that's a late clip. That's not That's not where you want that clip down Boy, there. Isn't that the truth? You usually see a clip down on this side of the mm -hmm. end when, when he catches the ball. Right. Brad Allman, as I said, waited for, his, waited for the defender to turn his shoulders upright with him and then took him out of the play. Penalty with the ball back to the 42-yard line. So Georgia Southern will start it from the 42 as McGrady comes up. Still in good uh, field position. Got some new kids in the game, Bill. Anthony Hayes in at wide receiver. Chance As Ward. McGrady rolls out. <laughs> McGrady gets to the corner, but there's nothing there. He's going to be racked up over on that right and left side of the field. Shoulder pad exposed and everything. He wants to stay away from that out of bounds. He wants to stay in the field of play to keep the clock running, which he did. Looks like we got some new offensive linemen in there as well. McGrady back to pass again. Fires right over the middle. Going to be knocked down, nearly intercepted. Out there by Roger Mydell from Rinkin. Out of Effingham County High School. Played for Coach Bob Griffith over there. Boy, Effingham County looks strong this year. Won their second game of the season last night against a fine Tiff County team. She did. I'm looking forward to the matchup between Effingham and Statesboro. Should be a classic. Statesboro. Excellent football team this year, too. Strong and traditionally strong. Last year they had a good club. Charles Webb's a winner wherever he goes, I'll tell you. Came in and really got those guys motivated to play. The program had, uh, had to be turned around, and he yeah. did it first year. And McGrady is going to be turned around, too. Racked up and bringing up a fourth down and a yardage on the play. This is, this is Bill, where you, where you take a penalty, a delay of game. Not to run the clock out, but to give your punter some room to work with. The ball's on the 42. We know that Norton has a cannon. We've seen it in action today. 
back him up five or so yards, but back him up five yards at least gives him something to work with. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what they're going to do. A minute 17 to go, 22 to 6 in favor of uh, Georgia Southern at this point. And we'll have another uh, game for you coming up here in a couple of weeks on TV 22. Florida A&M from down in Tallahassee, a team that, uh, of course, is just chomping at the bit to get back at Georgia Southern. Didn't play them last year, Terry, but that game's always been a classic. That this one's uh, not going to be in the Gator Bowl this year. We're actually down in their backyard at Tallahassee. We're going to their pit in Tallahassee. We've always played them in the Gator Bowl before. There's always been a pretty big crowd there. I don't know whether they've come to watch the game or come to watch the band at halftime. These are nas internationally known for their band. FAMU is... Uh, they're, they also got a great football team. The Rattler will strike again is what they always say. And you have to love that band. They put hey, out some athletes, Bill. Here you see a few of the folks that are left there in the crowd. Cheerleader's still trying to get them pumped. And Don Norton getting set to kick, standing on his 45-yard line. Look for a fake here, Bill. Rodney Oglesby Look for a fake, going way Bill. out. Yep, sure enough, Rodney Oglesby going way wide out. Open. He's wide open at the 30. Cuts back in at the 20. Rodney could go to the 10. There he is, touchdown. Well, that's the play Georgia Southern's been working on. They've worked on it for two years now. They finally had the opportunity to use it. Oglesby was wide open. Savannah State did not see, they thought Oglesby was running off the field. Norton knew what was going on, got the snap, wide open, great pass, because all the punter has to do is lay it in there. And obviously, Oglesby knows what to do when he gets the ball. Great pass. Absolutely fantastic pass. However, we don't have a holder out there right Rodney now. Rodney Oglesby was wide open. And Lester Eford's coming in along with Don Norton. Norton is the holder, so <laughs> he's thinking, I'm through here. Well, he's a, <laughs> and now he says, hey, i got to go back out. We could get a delay a game. Of course, with David Cool, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Bill, I always wanted to throw that pass. <laughs> <laughs> they never would let you do it, huh? We never had the chance. Yeah. Well, he puts it right through. It's going to make it 29 to 6. I wish I could say that I taught him that, but uh, I can't. In fact, that play right there is a creation. It comes from Dr. Pat Spurgeon, Georgia Southern Super Scout, as well as their kicking coach. He thought of that play, and uh, he knew it would work. Obviously, it did work. Work like a charm. Savannah State totally caught off guard on that one, and Georgia Southern goes up by a 29 to 6 score, 106 to play. And boy, if that hadn't, if it had been out of reach before, it certainly was then. As you see, take a look at the scoreboard there. If you'll zoom out a little, you can see how narrow those goalposts are this year too. Uh, ticket sales, by the way, box office is open from 8 to 5 every day. You want to see some Georgia Southern football, absolutely fantastic. Number to call in Statesboro is 681-0123. And the 800 number for you folks out of town is 544-2798. Southern picks up the tab on that one. The 800 number to call for tickets, 544-2798. And don't forget, tickets, of course, still available for just about every game. Plus, the December, well, I'll, I'll take that back. They're open, they're available for every game. And uh, except this one. And uh, 21st of December is when the national championship will be played right here at Paulson Stadium as Rogers is going to take that ball on the goal line, comes up field, gets across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. Nice run back on the play. Georgia Southern, 250 total yards offense this year. All time low at Paulson Stadium. So if, uh, if Savannah State is into moral victories, and I'm sure they're not, they can say, well, look at this. 250 yards. The previous low was against Middle Tennessee State, a right respectable ball club, uh, 286 yards. That was in 1985. That was the year they, um, they beat us unmercifully, 35 to 10. Our first and until last year's Eastern Kentucky game, only loss at Paulson Stadium. So Georgia Southern, a lot of the defense doing it here today, scoring the points early. As, um, New quarterback, Alexander, back up in the here game. Doug Grant takes it. It's going to be about a five, six yard gain on the play. It's going to be second down and five. Working from the shotgun is Alexander. Alexander's going to fire out to Cole in the flats. Cole will get across the 30 yard line. Doesn't get first down yardage, but he does get out of bounds to stop the clock with 32 seconds to go. I think he could have got the first down. He probably should have angled a little more for it. Yeah. 29 to six the score. It's going to be third down and about two. Alexander firing out there in the flats and it's going to be caught and he'll be dropped right away. That's Doug Grant catching it out there, the sophomore from Atlanta. Austin did a good play there. He came up from the cornerback position. He knew the guy was going to make the catch. All thing, only thing going through his mind is keeping from going out of bounds. Fourth down, two yards to go. They're naturally going to go for it. Nothing to lose at this point. Alexander will fire downfield. 
Once again, he's got Cole out there in the flats, and I don't think Cole's going to get away. He's not. That's the ball game, Bill. There's no more time to play. The clock has run out 29 to 6, the final, and we'll be back with the final statistics right after this. Nine to six victory in favor of the Georgia Southern Eagles and uh, Terry Harbin. It was a incident a game today where again the Georgia Southern just the, the stronger uh, of the two teams and just sort of wore Savannah State down. Although they did a very good job of containing Southern in the first half. Well, like I said earlier, Savannah State has a very good team and that they have everything you need except for depth. They have speed, they have size, and they have quickness, but they don't have the depth that they need to play against the Georgia Southern. Just like we didn't have the depth that we needed to play against Auburn University last week. We just reversed roles here. This was a, an interesting game from the standpoint that uh, the defense did most of the scoring in the first half. They sure did. Georgia Southern cannot be happy with their offensive production today, but they have to be happy with their defense today. Their defense did what they wanted to do. They strung out Leverett at quarterback. They brought right in Alexander in to play quarterback. They had a little breakdown, a couple passes over the middle. They've adjusted, and then they strung him out as well. Special teams played a good part of the game today. One missed field goal. Let's play in the narrow goal post. 250 yards offensively, and that is the lowest uh, for ever at Georgia Southern here at Paulson Stadium. That's nothing to brag about, but I can assure you that Coach Stowers, Coach Hodges, the wide receiver coach, they'll get back in there to look at some films and see what they have to do. This is uh, a game where we thought, you know, we talked about the narrower goal post today, but when you've got a kicker like David Cool, it hardly makes any difference. He missed one long field goal today. David Cool can hit it from 60. He proved it as a freshman. Hit 60 yard or 55. The 60 was a record. He hit a 52 today. Was that correct? Correct. And he hit a 47 today. So uh, David has the leg. It's just a matter of putting it inside the goal post. What well, we talked about earlier, the hash marks. When they adjusted the goal post, they did not adjust the hash marks like they do in the pros. That was a factor with your shorter field goals. We saw it today. All right. Scott Pierce has some uh, observations from the sideline as well. And Scott, we're going to go down to you and uh, find out um, what, uh, what, what, what you have to say here for the rest of this game. Well, all in all, Bill, you have to be happy about the game on both sides of the ball. Savannah State comes in here in front of a hostile crowd, and they hold Georgia Southern to close to, if not an all-time low offensive production here in Paulson Stadium. Also, Georgia Southern, it's a win. They're now 1-1 one one on the season, so a victory, you'll take it any way you can get it. I'm sure that's what Tim will tell you. And also, one point, one of the Georgia Southern players wanted me to make was, you know, they did go for a touchdown off that fake punt. They threw it to Rodney Oglesby. He had three interceptions on the day. The coaches felt, and this is one of the opinions, that he deserved it. They wanted to reward Rodney. Nothing against Savannah State, but they wanted to give Rodney, he had such a great day, give him something to take home, a touchdown, along with his three interception record. It was a scorcher indeed today, and Terry, I think that was a, that was a big factor in the, in the ball game as well. We saw a lot of people coming in and out. As uh, you mentioned, Rex Nottage, the, the excellent uh, uh, offensive lineman, had to come out at one point, and they just had to just sort of cover him in, in cold towels. Well, thank goodness we did have the depth to cover for the Rex Nottage. He's a great ball player. Michael A.U., Miguel A.U., excuse me, don't get on to me for that one, Miguel. <laughs> Miguel A.U., Morris, we got some players in there, but we had depth to come in and take over. One kick, quick remark on the uh, Scott Pierce uh, touchdown thing. Don Norton, the punter, threw the pass. I just like to say, as a punter in the years past, I taught Don that pass. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a satisfaction on that play as well for, for Terry Harvin. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with you for uh, the Florida A&M game from Tallahassee. Until then, I'm Bill Edwards for Terry Harvin, Scott Pierce, and all of us associated with uh, Georgia Southern Football 91. We'll see you next week.